If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this extended episode <laughs> of, of Mind Extra Knowledge. Pump. For the first hour of this episode, 65 minutes, we do our introductory conversation. We talk about Adam's food poisoning. He was pooping and puking at the same time. Oh, wow. What a mess. What a uh, shitty dragon. And his dog, Mozzie's emergency. Thank God he's okay. Uh, everybody we start was, off a little dark, but I promise we turn out of that. Everybody yeah. was pulling for it. We talk we about out of that. histamine intolerances and, uh, oh, my new Organifi oatmeal recipe. This is delicious. I did this this morning. We are sponsored by Organifi. If you go to OrganifiShop.com, enter the code MindPump, you'll get an exclusive discount. They also have the turmeric that I talk about in this episode. Then we talk about sports. Yeah. Justin and Adam. This one blew me away. I'm so I proud of you. I wasn't ready for this. Teach me all about the differences between the Warriors. I got like a, like I even got like like nervous palmy. Like I was all sweating in my palms. Like really? Oh, yeah, it was oh, like yeah. someone throwing a pitch at me. I wasn't it was ready. A, a super curveball. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is a topic I love to talk about right here. And you were <laughs> yeah. not telling you didn't tell me you're going to bring that up. Who's you know? going to win the championships? The, oh. the organized team playing of the Warriors, <laughs> or the uh, pass it to one person game of the Cavaliers? Actually, sounds like an yeah, that's about right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kick okay. it over to you. Yeah. Bob, maybe we, to you. <laughs> yeah, you need like a. I got a master's in BS. Yeah, color commentator. We guy. talk about uh, CBD scams; they're everywhere. Why you should not use cannabis, or the types of people that shouldn't use cannabis. We talk about cannabis fasting, and then we talk about Bill Cosby's deal with the devil. We think he might have signed a deal with the devil. I'm pretty sure. We mentioned Italy and the new euro crisis and the sharing economy. Then we get into the questions. The first question was. What is a, another way to build endurance other than cardio? You want to build stamina and endurance, but you hate doing cardio. In other words, you're normal. How else would you build endurance? The next question is, what do we recommend for helping with tennis elbow? This is a, an ailment where you have pain at the tops of your, or the ends of your elbow at the tops of your forearms. What recommend, recommendations do we have, easy for me to say, uh, that can help with that particular problem? And the next question this is a person who has a hard time with ep- empathy. And many times they feel like somebody's just being a victim and isn't helping themselves. Are they being an asshole uh, or is there something they should improve upon? We give our expert advice on yeah. that part of the question. And finally, we're assholes. How do we rein in our egos, our awesome, sexy egos? <laughs> how do we do that? We talk about that in this portion of the episode. Also, Fantastic. listen, there's a. Uh, Two days left. Two days. That's, That's it, it, right? That's mm-hmm. all. There, there's only two days left to get the fasting guide and the intuitive nutrition guide for free. Summer is around the corner. Do you really want to look the way you do with your shirt off at the mm. beach? Probably not. Wow. Get any bundle. Was that shirt shaming? You enroll in any <laughs> bundle and you will get an intuitive nutrition guide and the fasting guide for free. Now, bundles are where we combine uh, more than one map program together. So we combine them together. We discount them like 30% off. For example, our super bundle is a year of exercise programming. In other words, you enroll in it, and for a full year, you have all oh, your we workouts. Got you. All your workouts planned out for you. Enroll in any bundle, get those two guides for free the intuitive guide and the fasting guide. And you can find all of this at mindpumpmedia.com. T shirt time! And it's t shirt time. Oh, yeah. Only nine <laughs> reviews, Sal. What the what? fuck? Oh, yeah, yeah what you, need the to, fuck? you need to call and tell people how to do... This is what you do if you yeah. want to leave a review. People are liking us less, huh? Here we Dude, go. The odds of getting a t-shirt are so oh, high. Sal's politics. Is it purple button? <laughs> Let me tell you what you do. Go to your search function uh, on your podcast app. Type in Mind Pump. The icon will come up. Click on the icon. Like you've never seen this before. And then if you scroll down a little bit, there is a section that you can click on that says Ratings and Reviews. If you leave a five-star rating and a good review and Doug likes it, yeah. uh, we'll send you a free exclusive uh, T-shirt. And we're sending out three shirts this week. We got one going out to Rob Earl Dunn, Kayla Nedza, Ali Playa. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. We got you. Oh, yeah. Boy, God gosh. damn. You want to talk about the ultimate, the the ultimate marketing like success? Yeah. Diamonds are such a waste of... Do you know that the price of diamonds is tightly controlled by the diamond miners? 
Mm. They were only released so much, so the value stays super Those high. Those motherfuckers. Right. And let's be honest. I wish we would start a trend so it would go a different direction, like granite. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Granite? Yeah. yeah, like a granite ring. I think like, I think cool. granite I think right. granite's beautiful. Yeah. Right. I think it's gorgeous. It, it, it could have been that instead. I like, it's very accessible. I like I like cubic zirconium. You know what I mean? It wow. looks it looks sparkly. Yeah, what's the difference? Can you tell the difference, Justin? <laughs> Most people can't. I can't no. tell the difference. No. Yeah. I can't. But you know what it is? Then she'll be like, oh, you can't. You had to get the cheap one or whatever. <laughs> You yeah. just get her a big ass one. Yeah. Like that. I think it should be. You know what it used. To, just a big. huge gaudy one. Yeah. That's like, you yeah. know what it is. You have to prove. It's you're proving. It's gonna cut your face. You're proving your love. You know, or proving how much you love her. Back in I the day, you used to I, just I, used to kill the lion. You I mean, that's what kill it is. a lion and bring a lion. It I has honestly to be a think sacrifice. that women women's rings are more of a a dick measuring thing with guys. Mm. It's true. I you do. know what I'm gonna do? That's a good. That's a good point. Adam. I do think I'm that. just gonna so put back it, in the day. It was just a huge animal. Like you just slaughter. Just give a cast of your dick, like you said. All Remember how you said you were going to do that? Oh, I just give a cast of your dick. <laughs> you said Here's that a Here's what while you're ago. buying into. Yeah. You don't get a ring. You get this, yeah. this golden <laughs> this diamond, this golden wand. This diamond dick yeah. right yeah. here. <laughs> so diamond. That sounds like a terrible hey, superhero. Which, which one of you two was it that told me? So I've been like down and out since what? Thir- Friday night? Thursday night? Whatever. Yeah, dude. Oh, yeah, you yeah. got you got to tell everybody how sick you got. Bro, it, yeah. it's just been a, a crazy. You got like Ebola. <laughs> I don't know what. It's crazy. Uh, well, so. At first, I thought it was food poisoning because the way it hit me, right? Because I went to I went to bed, I got up like at eleven. I was I was hungry, and I I poured like a little a little mug full of granola and a little bit of almond milk. Not a big thing, just a little bit, and it crushed it real quick, and then fell right to sleep. And then I woke up at four o'clock in the morning, just ready to throw up. And then I just started at about four thirty five in the morning, and then went non-stop all, all Hard. day long. On both ends. Yeah, it was just awful. Running the bathroom, not knowing which if I should sit down or drop to oh, my knees. Oh, right? terrible. Yeah, it was like that. So It's like a double-headed dragon. But what doesn't make sense to me is almond milk and granola. I like, don't think that's... It's so unlikely to get uh, food poisoning from a processed food. Right. You right. know what I mean? Isn't it Especially, usually somebody shit in the spinach? You know what I mean? What? What? <laughs> What the fuck did that Every come time from? it's spinach, it comes like everybody gets food poisoning at these restaurants. What it's articles always are like you lettuce reading? or what spinach. What articles are you reading? Actually, you no, guys know right. what I'm talking about. I'm teasing, I'm teasing him right now. You no, what they'll, what they'll do is they'll find like fecal matter in in you know from fertilizer. Yeah. And Listen, many times that contains somebody shit in the spinach. Salmon. I just wanted you to feel stupid when I said that's yeah, why I said that. I know. I appreciate, that's true. I appreciate that. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Yes, dude. I've yeah, never dude. even heard of that. Yeah. Were you? Did you eat booty? Whoa, dude! Whoa. Yeah, that, <laughs> that took a turn. Yeah. Yeah. Is that why you got sick? No, 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 no. no. Just the it's well, been so, a while. He's ate some moody. So here's what's really weird. Mm. So that happens. I'm. I swear, I have food poisoning. Yada yada yada. Right. So I'm on the same time, uh, and I, I don't put this all together till literally yesterday. So I'd been coming home since we got back from our tour, almost every night this last week, and and the dogs or one of the dogs had been like all these little throw up spots in the house. Which I have bulldogs, so it's not that weird. They fucking chew on everything. They eat everything. So you know they normally throw mm-hmm. their they throw their food up every once in a while, and and it was a, a little more than normal. And I remember asking Katrina, Do you, "Is it Mozzie or is it Bentley?" She's like, "I don't know. They both seem okay. I haven't seen anyone throw their food up, and so we didn't think nothing of it." Well, the same day that I get like just violently sick, um, Mozzie wakes up that morning, right? And I'm upstairs, and I'm 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 laying in bed. I feel fucking terrible like I, if you move me i'm ready to shit myself or throw up and katrina's downstairs and she starts screaming at the top of her lungs <sighs> like i've never even heard her scream like this before so i fucking shoot out of bed running downstairs and come down and just as i get downstairs she's standing over mozzie and mozzie kind of comes to and pops up and i'm like what the fuck happened and, and she's like i don't know and she's like freaking out scared to death and she's like he was started choking, and he, she goes, he just passed out, and he went, his eyes rolled back his head, his legs collapsed, and he rolled over, and he just come to. And that morning, I heard him kind of like gagging and choking in the morning, and I thought that was really weird. And I thought, well, maybe he's just got something lodged in his throat that he ate. He's still drinking his water and stuff, so I'm telling Katrina, like, he's fine. We don't need to take him to the ER or anything like that. Dogs eat shit all the time. Like, he'll be okay. And I could tell that he was uncomfortable. He couldn't lay down. He was, and he, then he started like breathing and wheezing weird. And then, then he did it to me while she was gone, because like, I was homesick. He throws, he goes to throw up, and he was choking to throw up so much. And what it was was, 
he couldn't get anything out. It was like he had already thrown everything up that mm-hmm. he had, and so he was kind of choking on his own on his own bile, and he, just a little bit comes out, oh, just filled with fluid. And yeah, everything, huh? just a little bit, right? And he and then he he passed out again on me, and I kind of like put, started pressing on him like CPR, and he he revived and came back, and I thought that's really weird. And so I tell her, I said, you know, Mozzie's not doing really well. And she's like, I want to take him to the air when we get back. And I said, okay, well, I don't feel good. I'll go with you. Uh, but I'll just sit in the car. So we get there like 8 or 9 o'clock at night. And we're there all the way till midnight, you know. And she's and I'm waiting in the car. I'm texting her back and forth. What the fuck's going on in there? I'm all, I, And I didn't want to go because I told her, I said, listen, if he's got something lodged in his, his throat or in his stomach, he can't get it out. Like, he'll eventually pass it. He's breathing. He's drinking. Like, there's nothing they're going to do. They're going to do an x-ray on him and say, oh, yeah, it looks like he has a piece of wood or something in his stomach. And sure, yeah, yeah either he's going to pass it or if it's so bad, they're going to say, let's do surgery. And I said, no matter what, they're going to charge us 700 bucks for the goddamn x-rays and whatever laxatives they give him. I said, so I'm kind of, I'm really anti-going. And she, so she's going, texting back and forth. She's like, I need you to come in here. And so I get out and I'm already kind of irritated. I'm like, because my girl's a softy and I'm like, they're, they're just going to try and run this mm. fucking bill up on us like crazy. Yeah. You already been through this process before with your cat, right? Same ER, same everything, right? This is what's crazy. So I walk in this, this what they call a grieving room there, and the doctor comes in and uh, pulls up a, an x-ray of a dog's lung, and he goes, this is a healthy dog's lung. Then he pulls up mine, and you can't see anything. It's completely flooded with fluid. Same fucking thing happened to my cat after one year of having this cat, and basically drowned the cat drowned, drowned mm-hmm. to death. And so they're telling, she's telling me, and I'm like, well, what is it? And they're like, well, it's we're unsure right now. We're giving him oxygen. We're doing all these things for him. We're, we've got him a sedative. We can't fi- we can't figure it out yet until the start until we have a, a chance to get in there and hopefully drain some of this fluid. And she goes, I I highly recommend that we we keep him overnight. And I'm like, well, what are you guys going to do for him that I can't? And she's like, well, he's having a hard time breathing. Well. So they go out. And I'm telling her, I'm like, nah, fuck this. I'm like, they just want him to spend the night because when the dog spends the night, it's an automatic two thousand dollar bill. Mm. So uh, I'm like, I, I'd rather take him home. So I tell her that. I said, and she goes, well, I think he's going to die. And I was like, what? I'm like, you really think? She's like, yeah, no, he's not good at all. She goes, and I go, okay, well, if we keep him here, are you going to be able to save him? And she goes, it's about a 50-50 chance. Shit. And then Katrina just starts fucking bawling. I'm fucking about to lose it. I'm like, oh, my God, dude, my boy's only four years old. Are we going to lose him right now? So, I mean, we leave him overnight. I don't fucking sleep all night that night. So I they got two back-to-back days of puking my brains out. I just start to feel a little yeah, bit better. I then I get the dog thing yeah. happen to me, and then yesterday, right? So that all went down this whole this whole last weekend. But then I send you an article. But he's okay now. He Well, yeah. He's they, not, they said that his lungs were recovering. Right? <clears throat> yeah, they drained, they drained everything. We, we got him back home. But he's really, like, out of it. It's really sad to see him right now because you can just tell that he's comp- – he, yeah, You they could identi- tell he was on, on de- on, uh, on, ready to die. Did know? they identify mm. why his lungs? They don't, they don't know why. Now, with Bulldog, which they, she thinks, like, the diagnosis that I read that she gave is that they think that he chewed on something and kind of – because he did spit up some, like, carpet and plastic mm-hmm. and shit like that the first day. That he choked on that, and while doing that, like him choking and throwing up, caused fluid to flood into his lungs. And because bulldogs don't have a really good airway as it is, like he had a really tough time excreting all the fluid right, out. If that makes right. sense, and because it could be like pneumonia from an infection, it could be right. So but they don't did, think that's what it, it, in the diagnosis they they did rule out, or she didn't rule it out completely. But she said it's highly unlikely that it was pneumonia based off of how he cleared up and everything oh, okay. like that. But they still have them on antibiotics, anyways. Now that sent me down the rabbit hole of like googling and reading last yeah, night, yeah, which yeah. is why I sent you some stuff. Now, what I found is really crazy is that yeah, dude, blew me away. The article you sent me, yeah, that the Norton virus, Noro, Nora, sorry, Norovirus, Noro, mm-hmm. Nor is that you said N O R O, yeah, yeah, Norovirus um, can be passed between humans and dogs. I d- I had no idea because I I know most viruses and whatever are species specific or whatever. Mm. Rarely can you pass them, but typically they have to mutate. They have to mutate first and then go. But the norovirus, according to this article, can get passed from animal to from dog to human. Yeah, or or or, or the other way around. And so what made me start tripping out on this was okay, I had forgotten all about the throwing up before because the dog seemed normal. Mm-hmm. Now Mozzie is my dog. He's my lover, so he's the one that like I stick my fingers in his mouth and he's kissing me all the time, and I'm always like all up. I also cleaned up all of his vomit and shit for the last week that he'd been throwing up, obviously. 
So I just kind of started scratching my head like that's really weird that we both got he got and it was like put him on his deathbed. I felt like I was on my deathbed. It was that brutally bad. And I kept scratching my head that the food poisoning thing just wasn't adding up. It was like mm. I was 100% sure there's no way someone could. Because granola is the oh, only wow. thing you had that no one else had. Yeah, granola and almond milk. Yeah, well, and, highly and, unlikely. Right. Yeah. I mean, highly it's possible, un- but unlikely. Right. Very unlikely mm. what, that. And I thought that was what was so strange. And I, I've had food poisoning multiple times, and it, it hits you quick, right? It hits you. So it has to be something, the last thing you ate. It's not, oh, something I ate earlier in the day or yesterday or whatever, the day before. It has to have happened like within hours of- Typically. Yeah, yeah. of you feeling that way. Typically. Well, the so, norovirus is no joke. You know, that's that's the virus that'll get a cruise ship- shut down yeah like people will get sick on a cruise ship and it, sp- it spreads so fast it's extremely contagious and it's hard to get rid of like you have to use bleach you can't just clean a surface it'll stay there you have to bleach things and so some so on and these are you can look these up cruises will will you know someone on the staff or somebody who's on the cruise will get sick it'll start spreading and they shut that shit down right away they go into port get everybody off because otherwise on an enclosed you know boat like that it'll just oh, yeah. spread like is it all crazy i mean it's not airborne it's just like every everything contact everything or, yeah. Yeah. everything it yeah. can be airborne through uh droplets of you know like if i sneeze or cough oh shit but it's typically on surfaces and it just stays there it's like it's 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 just it's super hardy yeah and so it's super easy to spread and so i don't you know your dog have this like unique bond now huh? yeah right <laughs> no i don't know i don't even know if it was necessarily that but it, it was enough to make me go like okay there's a possibility that the dog can pass a virus from from him to me so that made me go like okay that that now seems more plausible than the- did he eat any granola <laughs> no, he didn't. He, yeah. he didn't have any. Did granola. you have any dog food? Yeah. We're gonna rule out the. I granola. might have had some dog food though. <laughs> <laughs> when you're when you're warm, when you're warming it up, you got to right. taste it. Oh, make sure it's too I had a milk bone once. I did. Gross. It was it was like eleven thirty at night, dude. I, I was hella tired when I walked downstairs. Like I might have grabbed the wrong fucking bag of food. You thought it was granola. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like this organic you're granola. Probably really stoned. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, this, yeah, this, yeah, this, now, now I know why I like artificial sweeteners. This granola tastes bland. You ate a milk bone once. I did. I ate a milk. Why? I have no idea. I think it was a dare, or I don't know, my next door neighbor was like handed it to me and was just like, Have you ever eaten one of these? I was like, No. And I just started eating it and realized it was a dog bone. Well, I was at PetSmart just the other day and I saw they, you know, they had like on display all these different like healthy dog bones. And I'm, so I was reading the ingredients and yeah. It's all shit that we eat. <laughs> no, no, I was like reading the whole ingredients. I'm like, there's nothing in there that I don't consume. I'm like, so it's. Bro, I think I've eaten. Do- Everybody's eating dog food. I have it. It's you never be had like dog the worst food. quality though. For, you know what I'm saying? I've also never tasted my semen. Those are two things that everyone Whoa. thinks that's that you. That's two categories. Totally yeah. different. It doesn't that's matter. Totally different. Everybody see. seems to think that's. You a don't normal. really know yourself. <laughs> yeah. See, friend. that's what I'm saying. Hold on a second. I, let's, those let's, two things I've never done. Let's clear things up for a second. Dude, women taste their own breast milk. It's true. Breast milk's not semen, It's though. different. I feel like it that's is different. A, it's yeah. a different thing. Uh, I don't know. Here's... Hmm. <laughs> I'm, about to, I'm about to get into some... I feel like by the time you produce semen, you don't, you're don't. you like, I don't want to do that anymore. You mm. know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, there's nothing that makes me go, I want to try my dog's food either. Yeah. yeah. Well, dog, you never did when you were a kid? It's true. No. You, when you were a kid, you never picked up a dry piece of dog food? Not that food. I know of. I'll have to ask my mom friend. that one. I'll call oh, her and ask yeah, her that one. I, I did. Don't, I don't remember I that. I ate dog food a couple times. Don't tell me it was the wet food. No. Hell no. Hell, did you do that? No. Oh, okay. I, I yeah. saw somebody do That's that. That's terrible. That I know people that have. I've seen people buy, bite into a milk bone before, but I, and they're yeah. like, oh, yeah, it's fine. No. It's like a, it's like a yeah. dry graham cracker. No, I was worried, man. <laughs> yeah, I saw I, kind of... I saw how crapped out you were yesterday, dude. And uh, uh, it, you know what sucks is I, I was really empathizing with you. I don't have any pets, but then I started thinking about my kids. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God, what if one of my kids... I feel yeah. like yeah, those are my like kids, it rubbed dude. off on me. Those yeah. are my kids for sure. You know, I know, so I know they are. Pain, yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know they are. Well, so not not a lot of people know. Like when I was uh, when we had that Paul Check interview, like the first time he came to our place, like that was when my dog got hit by a car. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah, and so I had to like muster it out and like figure out how to like carry on. That how was did, rough. Did, what'd you do? Just shut it off or separate it? Yeah, I just was like, I'm going to mourn this and deal with this when I get home, you know, and I'm just going to, like, uh, be here while I'm here. But, yeah, that was rough, dude. That's a, that's a yeah, tough that was situation. A rough, that was a rough day. Yeah. I haven't even apologized to Lane. I meant to do that because I just bounced yesterday. I didn't even. Oh, uh, yeah. We, she, we we told him what, oh, what you was did. going on. Yeah, oh, okay, so. cool. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that because I felt so bad. Yeah. I just literally, she freaked me out because we just picked him up from the hospital. And so she had text, She had drove here while we were with Lane. She was in the parking lot. She's like, do you want to come out and kiss him and see him real quick? And I was I didn't respond because we were in here, and then she'd sent like two more 
oh no, he threw up again. That's like that was the last one. That's the last one. Then I'm like calling her. Oh shit. Yeah, no answer. I call her mom. I call I call everybody, and like I'm getting no answer, Mm -hmm. freaking out. So then I just get in the car, bail, head over that way, and then finally on the way over there, she picked up. I was like, oh, with the boys. No, he under we told we told Lane he understood. Yeah, that was cool. It was cool with meeting with him again. You know, it's funny. We're so different uh, in so many different ways and understandings. However. However, and that episode will air after this one, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, we'll talk about that. So I don't want to give too many spoiler alerts, but he was saying a lot of things that sounded very- Woo-woo? <laughs> mind pumpish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah he dude. He certainly did. I was like, did you just say intuitive, like, Edie? This doesn't <laughs> sound guy, like you, Lane. This guy. No, yeah. you, know what I, you know what I like about Lane? And this is why we, we, we meet with the guy and hang out with him You know, when, when we have the opportunity. Whether we disagree or not, he's a good guy. That's the bottom line. He's not a bad person. Yeah, you know what I mean. So he gets a bad rap. Yeah. I, I, he just he's he gets, very polarizing. Yeah, you know. But so is Paul Check. He cares a lot. You know, like he said on the episode. I mean, he just he's one of those guys that's very passionate. And so if you're not on, you know, his side, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be abrasive. I still think too that there's he's had success being like the antagonist, and so it's hard to let go of that. Yes, yeah. of and, course. And so I think there's there's a part of him that still kind of feeds into that because it's got. He always him. wants to fight a battle. Right. Yeah. He's yeah, yeah. He like he likes being the underdog and doing that. So, I and I think I I feel like every time we've met and we've hung out with him that he's got, he's made steps in that direction of realizing that I don't think he needs to be that person. He's growing out of it. You know, yeah. I think part of it is uh, Paul is dating uh, his girlfriend. I think that's part of why he's kind of moving out of that. Mm. You can see, you can see the some influence. They have a really nice relationship. I talked with her a little bit, and you can see them together, and you can see that they've got a good relationship, and that typically has a positive influence on you weren't convinced man. you weren't convinced that she's she's dating him to get to us yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I need it no you, you could make a case for it yeah, yeah no yeah, yeah. i feel like yeah no you can see that they've got a really good relationship i like seeing that so it's 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 pretty cool no no she's but good for him anyway did yeah. you uh did you see what i was eating this morning yeah the oatmeal boom since when did you start so, eating with mr uh, well no two things so you know we had uh Ruscio you going back to your old bodybuilder ways no 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 so you know we had that episode with Ruscio, and i love oh Ruscio. the histamine stuff i oh. love Ruscio because he's brilliant has knows a shit ton of knowledge but then he's also got a lot of experience working with people so sometimes when you when you talk to a researcher everything is very like clinical data shows clinical and then you yeah. as a trainer you're like eh, actually in real life I've seen it work out a little differently. Well, because he has so much experience working with people, he under, he he knows the applications. And so mm-hmm. we're talking, and in the episode he talked about histamine intolerance. Now, histamine is something you can you, your body can build up, and it gets rid of it, your your body gets rid of it. But you can genetics determine how quickly you get rid of it, and also if you have gut health issues or dysbiosis where your your gut microbiome is off, or if you have SIBO, there's a lot of causes where your body doesn't get rid of histamine very quickly, and so you overload your body with histamine and you get an immune reaction. And that immune reaction can show up as classical immune reactions like allergies or you know, hives. Or but even it, just being like fatigue too, right? It, fatigue, brain fog, uh, anxiety, uh, irritability. It can be um, caffeine intolerance. So I have a few of these, and even though the fasting has made tremendous improvements, I noticed that towards the end of the month, after it's been three or four weeks since my last fast, I start to feel like I'm getting worse. Then I do the fast again and I feel good. And I keep thinking to myself like that, something's not right. You know what I mean? It shouldn't be that way after, after I shouldn't have to do this all the time to feel normal. And I shouldn't feel like I'm getting worse leading up to a fast. Like something's not right. So as we were talking, you know, he talked about a potential histamine intolerance and he lists the symptoms. And Oh, he listed off like every single food I've seen you eat like, yeah, consistently. Know, right? his, his, like, well, his go-to daily. five, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I was like, oh no. Well, here's the thing. Like, yeah. I definitely can feel like fog, brain fog. I can definitely get like uh, um, irritability and anxiety, but then I get hives. That's a big one. If I take a really hot shower, I'll get hives every once in a while. And I did notice that if I take a Claritin or a histamine receptor blocker, that I started noticing my gut would feel better, and I started, and I put two and two together. Said, okay, it's immune reaction, whatever. But I didn't put the histamine thing together. And then he lists the foods. If you eat keto or paleo, the odds are you might eat, you may be eating foods that are very high in histamine, like avocado, uh, processed meats like bacon, sausage, uh, beef jerky, jerky yeah. uh, canned fish like sardines, which I eat a lot of. 
Um, when you see cashews too, nuts. Yeah, yeah, I eat cashews yeah. all the time. Yeah, it's like and the whole keto like layout. Right yeah, there. so he's it's like, it, you know, what's interesting about that is I have not heard anyone talk about that it's, yet. It's it's actually we've been everyone's been pumping keto nobody for said yeah, that. nobody yeah. has mentioned. It's actually that. more common than you think because as yeah. I did research after we had that conversation, I'm seeing lots of people may have potential issues. It causes estrogen intol. It can cause estrogen like intolerance symptoms in women. So if a woman has symptoms of like having too much estrogen. You know, things like uh, cysts on her ovaries or um, really strong emotional fluctuations or bad PMS, that kind of stuff. It could be too much estrogen or it could be too much histamine, which your body then becomes more sensitive to estrogen. Kind of like my body became hypersensitive to caffeine because I had a very bad caffeine uh, or a poor caffeine tolerance. So, Ruscio's suggestion, eliminate uh, foods that are high in histamine. Give it a few days and see what happens. Remarkable difference. My caffeine tolerance is through the roof and I don't get hives anymore, which is pretty cool. So now I find I can eat foods like oatmeal and rice and other foods that typically if I threw them in more than once in every while, I would get gut issues and now it's not a problem. And I, I did create a new Organifi recipe with the oatmeal. If you put a oh, scoop snap. of you put a scoop of that of the protein yeah. in the oatmeal and then put some butter in there to give it a little bit of that little fat. Mix mm. that thing up. What flavor protein are you using? Pro uh, chocolate. Oh, the chocolate. Yeah, the chocolate Organifi. That shit's fucking good, dude. Really? Yes. Put a scoop in there. Put that butter. Was, put butter like to melt it first. That was like a staple breakfast for me for so yeah. long. Protein that powder was, and oatmeal. Yeah. I've seen people no do way. that yeah, quite yeah, a lot. Dude, that yeah, was, in their protein shaker. Yeah. They put oatmeal you know, in it. You remember? It mixes up really good. My old, it does oatmeal. work. You remember yeah. my old partner Tony, right? Yeah. So I was a client of mine. She was a client of mine. And she in it she, still today. It's out at, uh, in, I think she's in Knob Hill. She's in some of the Nutri Nutri Shops. Um, it's called Tony's Oatmeal. It's really Adam's Oatmeal. I taught her, <laughs> and it's all it all it is is yeah. like you know granola, walnuts, uh, whey protein, and of course she has a proprietary blend in there. But I can't I think I don't remember what it is. It's some mix of cinnamon and some bullshit spice or whatever like that. But it was the yeah. it was the oatmeal that I used to have her eat. <clears throat> I'd have I used to make all my clients do it. I used to do it all the time. Like it was really, a, yeah, it was a great way to for my female clients to bump up their protein because they weren't getting enough protein. Throw it in your oatmeal. Yeah, throw mm -hmm. it in your oatmeal in the morning, and it actually tastes pretty good. It's really good, yeah, yeah. and the, the the I I always trip out because I had where was I I was somewhere, and I wanted to do this with oatmeal didn't have uh, my protein with me so I bought uh, another plant protein from Whole Foods, uh, the old one that I used to take remember the one that I used to take the raw I think it was called or whatever, mm -hmm. and I mixed that in and, you know. The Organifi protein tastes way better than, oh, it's, than it's, all the other plant proteins. Vegan, yeah. Like now that I haven't protein. had the other ones for a it while, it doesn't. To me, it does not. It doesn't compete with whey. Whey to taste. Whey is always going to be better. Whey tastes always. way better. But yeah. if you're somebody who's who's going to do a, a vegan protein, I don't think there's anyone that's better. I haven't had one that's that's yeah. any better. And before that, I had that raw one, which I thought was good. But um, no, there's no competition whatsoever. So anyway, I'm surprised neither one of you's brought up uh, anything about the Warriors. Uh, what? 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 Dude, don't even start Come that, on, dude. dude. Don't even. I actually watched. Bro, the, you're not even allowed to bring that up. Not, I, yeah, last night. Hey, why are you guys gonna hammer me? I'm setting you up. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> shit about. All I know is is that they won. Apparently. Oh yeah, no, yeah. it's great, dude. It was no, great. And you know what? I talk to all the boys over in in Texas all the time. So uh, you know, uh, Rob and. Um, Fuck, what's oh, our Rob TV? Yeah, yeah, and those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they they're all big the jiu-jitsu podcast. Yes, they're all huge Rockets fans, and so they talk. We, we've been talking oh, yeah. shit the whole fucking playoffs, going back and forth. Like, oh, I can't wait till we meet. I'm like, bro, yeah. we're gonna. Whoops. I thought we were gonna sweep them first of so all. This was a good. This yeah, was a good they got series. one. They got one. In well, this. if you're if you're a Warriors fan like me, there here's what happened in this series. I don't want to bore everybody with sports right now and go too far in this, but. The one we had uh, Iggy out, which by far is one of our best players. So to have him out was was rough to not have him in the series. For some weird reason, uh, we all of a sudden went away from our ball that we've played. All, I've watched every single Warrior game this year, and we have the best team ball than anybody else. I mean, statistically, we we average more assists every single game than yeah, any, you've been telling me about yeah any and... other NBA team ever has. So it's just so fun to watch them play this way the unselfishness yes. yes and for some fucking reason we got to the rockets and the rockets kudos to them they played incredible defense better defense than anybody else right. has played on us got us off our game that's what it was and we went to this iso durant ball 
Yeah. Which I this is what made me stop watching basketball ten years ago. Yeah, yeah. when you had the superstars as yeah. yes. your Shaq and everybody else that they just feed the ball constantly. And I get the theory because this was what everyone was saying. Okay, Chris Paul, D, Chris Paul D's up, uh, Curry, and you've got Clay and Harden. Nobody can stop Durant. There's no one to cover Durant with those two matched up like that. Mm. So he and he's one of the best players in the world. So give him the ball, let him yeah. go to work. And game one and two, it it would carry us just fine. But even when I watched those wins. I wasn't happy with them. It wasn't was, the same dynamic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It changed the whole like uh, energy and the way that they would play uh, typically. So, yeah, but yeah. It, it does highlight, and not that I'm a fan and watch, but it, and just based off what you're telling me, it does highlight what you guys have been saying about the Warriors uh, this for a while now and is their versatility, right? Yeah. Their ability to change game plans. And you've been talking about, both of you guys have been said that about them. Well, yeah, that's good. I mean, that's great coaching by by Steve Kerr to be able to, it's so funny to hear you asking questions. Isn't that nice? Yeah, I'm, I'm having yeah. such a hard I'll time. I'll jump right, right in. Right. <laughs> no, it's like, see, you're being serious, but you know, it's like. I'll jump right no, in. It's, good quite, it's I good. good. I don't know why I feel uncomfortable talking to you about sports. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, how do I navigate this to make like, sure oh. this is good right here? So, no, no, no I, yeah, we, it's, uh, it is, uh, Coach Kerr is an incredible coach, I think. I think he's amazing. I think that that might have been the game plan. I think it worked well the first two games. Games. I don't think it's smart, though. I, I'll say something super controversial that's probably going to piss people off that are that are Warriors fans along with me. I don't fucking like Durant on our team. I think that this series is wow. an example of us playing, ba- getting away from the game that we're so we won it. We 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 set the record for wins in a season without him. We won we won the championship without him. Now we've added him, and all season long we proved that that he proved that he could play Warriors ball, and with him it was just awesome. Like how so great if you had this crazy dynamic and chemistry, mm-hmm. and you add a player to the team, and the chemistry stays the same. And the chemistry stays the same. But we saw an example that we hit a little bit of adversity in the playoffs, and we reverted to this ball that we've never played. We didn't play. We haven't played this way ever. Like in yeah. the last five years, the Warriors don't play basketball like this. Like that's against the system, and so to see that. And to see Durant to keep doing that, well, it was really frustrating for me that, yeah, we won, I'm happy. But after seeing that, man, if we if we go play like that this series. So are they in the championship now? Is yeah, that it? Against yeah. LeBron. Yeah. You, what's oh, even, shit. What's even more Finals. impressive? Wait a minute. The uh, LeBron plays for <coughs> LA, yeah? No, no, no. Cavs, oh, right. oh, okay. So listen, the, so the thing that's really impressive. Damn, I got it something wrong, dude. Yeah. Yeah, you, so you just, I tried. He's like, <laughs> he's like, he's like, look at me. I'm like, uh, I, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, the what's crazy. It shows my vulnerability, okay? Yeah, LeBron no, is on a team, okay? Halfway through the season, there was all this drama with, with their team. Gets rid of like the whole team, practically puts on a bunch of like no name players okay he's he's got he's got love so loves le- loves great but by the way he gets hurt the last two games of the last series this dude i would have i 100% counted the cavs out no yep. way they could no way you could scratch your team halfway through a season and think you could even make playoffs he blows everybody away he makes playoffs then the motherfucker goes all the way and and, and makes the finals yeah. this is his 8th year in a row being in the finals on all different teams yeah. who do you think's carrying that team talk about yeah. so talk, is about, this, one of the, talk so, about the greatest player to ever play the game and i know the jordan fans i'm a jordan fan I know. but lebron james is we're watching history right now, watching what he's doing. So let me ask you guys this: uh, from someone who doesn't care and doesn't watch anything like this, right? It, what's the the different? The, are they totally different styles? Then the two. Oh, oh yeah. so yeah. is this a contrast of yeah, one style versus another style? It is if we play our game. Ooh, sell it to me. What is the what is the Cavalier style versus the the Warriors? So style? LeBron, what is the contrast? Everything runs around LeBron James yeah. for the Cavs. So he's, they they he's play the entire offense. One hundred percent. So they play the 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 superstar ball yeah, version. It's, it's, he comes it's down opening and free. Yeah, he him comes up. down and literally he'll wave everybody out, spreads the yeah. entire floor, so and everybody just stands there. He goes to work. Yeah. And he he demands a double team, so he'll drive past the first guy, so another guy has to collapse and save mm-hmm. it. When that happens, LeBron either one has a he kick, kicks it out, or he takes. Or he still takes it all the way yeah. to the, all the way. To the he's way. so powerful; he'll just take it in. So anyway. there's that style versus the Warriors, technical basketball. Who, who Steve Kerr is like, you do not shoot the ball until we get three passes minimum yeah. every time we come Ooh. down. Movement. It's yeah. about ball. I movement. like that. Yeah, no, it's great. It it's makes way for more great, fun to watch. For, I like that. I, I won't great. watch it though. I probably won't watch it. <laughs> but I like the way you guys <laughs> sold that. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> actually, like, I've had enough sports. Actually, talk. no. Can I say something real quick? Let me ask you guys a question. Who were you guys watching the games at home? Yeah, oh, I hope a, to be there. Yeah, you're gonna go uh, watch them. I said I was gonna. All, go, not I, all of them. No, no, yeah, no. Okay, no, I'd be broke. So some of them you're <laughs> gonna <not>. watch. <laughs> some of them you're gonna watch at home. I'm doing it the lame yeah, dad yeah. way. I'll watch it if if I watch it with one of you guys. I'm not gonna watch it by myself. You can okay. watch it at my house, bro. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, if you oh. pro- if you promise to come party over, party at Justin's house. Okay, thanks, party Justin. In my house. It's on, <laughs> Everybody's it's, invited. It's on record now. <laughs> <laughs> now you have to do it. I won't give out the address. Uh, that was such a curveball for you to throw yeah. that in there. Uh, hey, I thought oh, you I love it. He looked at his phone. and I thought he was going to pull up some, some study that came. out. I do have some studies. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was <laughs> like, I'm ready. I'm like my brain was going science, and he goes, uh, "Let's yeah. talk about the Warriors." What? I know. So one thing that I thought was kind of funny was I saw a lawsuit out there. Like Dr. Dre was suing some gynecologist who was like trying to change his name to Dr. Dre and it's like what? trademark infringement. Yeah. He's like, I'm like, the only doctor. Why does he care? Like, I'm the only doctor that can be Dr. Dre. <laughs> not some gynecologist. Like, he's getting all angry who about it. Are you serious? Right. Doug, pull that up. I want to see yes. that. Who Do- cares? Dr. Dr. Dre, Dr. Dre sues gyno. I mean, this That's is good. the kind of news I pay attention to. Yeah. Like, why? Why Why does that matter? Like, you know, he has audiobooks, I guess, and so he didn't want the confusion. <laughs> I was going to make a terrible joke. I think yeah. I'll hold it in, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? The gynecologist sees more pussy than... All right, sorry. All right, there we go. There we go. That's where you're going. Yeah, remo- he, gotcha. he lost his trademark battle, so they actually... It's not even spelled the same. I He's know. So stupid. It Who cares? Like, why? He Who just cares? lost money on that. You know what this reminds me of? Have you guys seen the, te- the book Mind Pump? There's an old book. Oh, yeah. There's an old book. It's not written by us. Don't give the guy any... Don't buy it. Or maybe. I don't know if it's a good book or not. <laughs> it's like some aerobic look looking... Up, look up Mind Pump the book, Doug. You Is guys got a see... lady in like a leotard? No, it? it's a dude with really bad 80s it's, hair. It's very 80s, I find. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a, it's like 80s hair. You can't... Just, about... oh, okay, Mind Pump book. Yeah, you'll That's see good that we second. still... We come up over it. What? Yeah. Well, of course, we own this now. We own this bitch. <laughs> yeah. No, you got to type in Mind Pump... Oh, I guess he can't. Find- there it is. Oh, there. There. Yes. Oh, I have. He seen looks it. like he looks like you know the 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 he movie like, Cobra with the about? Sylvester he looks like Stallone. Sal. Yeah. He looks like Sal with Dude, a that mullet. That was you. That was yeah. originally what we were gonna do with from Maps Anabolic. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just need to change his red tank to white. Hey, like wife not, beater. He doesn't look bad though. Look he looks that. very Rambo esque. Yeah, he's, right? he's got a sick Tony Danza. He's a nice mullet. nice looking guy. Yeah. The psychology of bodybuilding. Really. Okay. Can we order that, Doug? Maybe we should read that. Yeah, go ahead and order that. I'd like to. I'd and like then to sue them the for trademark. The psychology yeah. of it. I don't know. It looks like it was. It's been around longer than us. For sure. If that picture dates it, that thing must have come out in 1983. Yeah. For mm. sure. Oh, that's hilarious. So I do have. I do He's have built it up. real science and I do sports. have a study to bring. Although up. I do appreciate that. Thank yeah, you. That was, You're welcome. That was fun for a minute. You're welcome. There. Refreshing. You're welcome. Yeah. So I was reading uh, a study that was published by the Journal of American uh, Medical Association. They did a study in 2017 that found that 69% of the CD, CBD products that that were tested mm-hmm. on the market, 60, oh. 69% of them didn't even have CBD. In them. I'm glad you brought Are this you up. Are you shitting no, me? I'm, I swear glad, to God. I'm glad you brought this up because wow, you, you had shared this with me and I forgot we didn't bring this up to talk about it. This is such a good point because, again, like what always happens in this industry, a little bit of good science comes out. Everybody's jumping on the CBD. I mean, when we went to paleo, was that not the yeah. big thing, right? Yep. I mean, this is just- Oh, it makes get- sense. Remember how expensive it was when we looked into it? Like, of course, they're going to like pixie dust or not even use it. Not use it. And what they'll do is they'll, first off, understand that- So that, easy uh, understand to do that, that with CBD. Yeah, and, and nobody checks, right? Yeah, nobody how checks. How are you going to know? The market regulates it in the sense that the good ones will succeed or whatever. But in this period of time, this interim or whatever- Nobody's checking, and what they'll do is they'll they'll get it'll say on it hemp oil, mm. CBD hemp oil, and it'll give you the milligrams of hemp oil, which doesn't mean anything. Yeah, you could get hemp oil and have no CBD in it whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? So right now the only or the or the hustle is this: it'll say like you know 100 milligrams of CBD for the whole bottle. Yeah, and there's 97 fucking pills in there. It's yeah, like, exactly. Oh, it's fucking great. <laughs> yeah, to get to really get a therapeutic cool. effect from CBD for medicinal reasons, you probably need to take closer to 20 milligrams at least uh, for a dose. That's yeah. a lot. And for that, a serving, yeah. that's a lot when you look at what CBD is dosed at on the market, which is typically a milligram at the most. I yeah. haven't seen anything over a mil- one to five milligrams. So it's pretty rare, yeah, and that's pretty stingy about yeah, it. Yeah, and you're not going to really. I don't think you're going to get you know much out of that. I mean, remember, remember CBD, what it does in the body, it doesn't attach to the to the cannabinoids. Well, receptors. this has been you know this has been hard for us too because we get we get stuff sent to the studio every day now, right? Like people wanting us to try their products or look at things or whatever. And man, we must have I would say ten. And Sal takes them all. Ten, home. ten or fifteen. <laughs> I've tried them all. <laughs> ten or fifteen different companies that have sent us CBD stuff, right? Because of yeah. course, Mind Pump comes out, talks about marijuana all the time, so we'd be perfect to sell a CBD. So, problem why you don't hear us talking about none of them is because most of them are doing this. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, mm-hmm. we, or mm-hmm. either, the, either either way underdosed or you take it and you notice nothing. Right. And I'm pretty sensitive to see, even CBD, which is non psychoactive. I can tell when I take it, and it doesn't make me high or anything, but I do feel. 
just a little more calm, sensible. You know, being. the only way I can I can tell a difference with CBD is what you you put me on to, which was if I smoke or I have a high THC, mix it. I can I'm you know I've smoked consistently enough that I know what my my high should feel like. So with and without the higher CBD, mm-hmm. I can feel the difference. Oh yeah, what do you notice? Yeah, it's just a, it's a much calmer, like it's yeah. less psychoactive. Right. Yep. Like uh, it, you know, I can do a strain that is very very high THC. And man, it doesn't take very much of that, and I'm definitely get the kind of the psychoactive counteracts paranoia. a lot of the, the it does. Bad, yes, it does. Side one, one of the worst side effects of uh, THC is the uh, memory loss, short term memory loss. Um, and the studies seem to show that it's not permanent unless you use THC uh, through adolescence, through you know, with the with the developing brain. Then some studies suggest it's not confirmed yet, but they suggest, and there's been several of them. So I would err on the side of it's that the connection's probably real, that when kids use a lot of THC as their brain's developing, that they have like a permanent reduction in their IQ. And it's not massive, but it's something like 10 points, which if you are in a field where you're really challenging your mind and you're competing with other people like that, you probably want those IQ points, you know? Yeah, I think so. But with adults, they don't seem to see that, they don't seem to notice that. It does improve create or, or improve creativity in some people. But it does affect short-term memory. And I know that if I use too much THC, I definitely don't remember things as well. Mm -hmm. But studies show that when you take CBD with THC, you eliminate that quite a bit. So CBD with THC, you won't get the the side effect of the memory. Now, I want to go on record on saying something because I'm I'm really glad you brought this up because I've been getting a lot of DMs regarding this. And because we just did an interview recently with Dosis, right, with Jeremy. Mm -hmm. And of course, we've talked about it a lot on the show over the years. Is I don't, I do not think you need marijuana in your life. Like, no. If you're getting, if you're going along just fine, and 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 you don't feel like you're trying to remedy something, like I, I feel like we've we've been pro it for so so long that people are like, oh, okay, like you know, I've been really hesitant to try it for a very long time, but it's like I trust you guys. You guys say all this great stuff. Like, what do you recommend I take or do? And I'm like, well, I don't recommend you take yeah. or do anything. Like, Yikes. what are you doing? Yeah. Like, why do you feel the need to even experiment with it? Like, what are you searching mm-hmm. for? And a lot of people can't answer me. They're like, well, or they'll send me a message like, you know, well, what are uh, what are some of the the health benefits or what are better strains for that are healthier? Mm-hmm. This I'm like, well, nothing's. It's not like a. This isn't like a healthy regimen that you should have in your diet. No, no. I, I think if what, what you'll find in the future is for health, if you just want good health, you're probably going to see a lot of cannabinoid-based uh, products, but not the um, decarboxylated uh, cannabinoids. So let me ex- let me explain what I'm talking about. So when you take the marijuana plant- Some big words, dude. Yeah, I know. <laughs> when you take the, the marijuana- words of shit that don't get you high. Yeah. 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 That's what you're trying, well, when trying you, to say. When you take the marijuana plant, let's say I pulled the plant out of the ground, right? And I, and I were to squeeze all the juice out of it. It would be full of uh, cannabinoids, but they're bound- they would be bound by an acid, meaning if I had a bunch of THC, I think it's THCVA or THCA, I can't, I can't remember what the actual uh, acronym is, but when you take that, you don't get high because you have to decarboxylate it, which, which heat does that. That's why you burn marijuana or you heat it up is it takes off that acid by, uh, so it's not bound anymore, then it's psychoactive. But if you take it in the bound form, you have no psychoactive effects, but there seems to be some potential health benefits. But there's a lot of things that act on the cannabinoid system that are not just canna- that are not uh, cannabis. Uh, although cannabis has probably the highest concentration and that's what cannabinoids are named after. Turmeric, turmeric has got cannabinoids uh, uh, you know, or works with the cannabinoid system. So does ginger. And those are things you could buy at the store. Right, right. Turmeric you could buy at the store, you could juice it. Both anti-inflammatory. But if you don't want to juice it, because I know how turmeric tastes, I used to do this and it's you got to plug your nose and shoot that shit real quick. Buy a good turmeric supplement. You know, I've been using the Organifi one. I take eight capsules a day, four, t- four in the morning, four at night, and I get some of the effects that I notice, the anti-inflammatory effects and, you know, gut health effects that I know that I'll notice from, from CBD. You know, you mm-hmm. mentioned THCA and did I, did I tell you guys that that's one of the biggest hustles that's in the marijuana industry? So is hmm. when they do the testing, you get all these different, different THCs and the, oh. and so what a lot of these plants will read THCA a lot higher than regular THC. Mm. And that's the part that when you go to purchase and you're like, oh, that's 25% THC, that's higher than the other one. I want that one. Because everyone just, they correlate the THC with what gets them high or feels psychoactive or goofy or whatever. But the hustle with the clubs are, 
is they'll take the higher of the two reading and they'll and they'll post it. And most of the time it's the THCA, but they don't put THCA. They just put THC level mm. and they and they put put it up there that it's ranked. That's yeah, so it was a lot you, of shen- there's a lot of shenanigans. So when you guys hmm. see when people go to clubs, so the, when you go to a club and you see 25, 27, 29% THC levels, it's bullshit. Like you're I think hot- you're talking to, I think what you're talking about is THCV. THCA is what converts to THC when you heat it up. So I think what you're talking about is another. THC yeah, I don't word. know. I don't know which one they're pulling. They pull from the highest one they can, right? There's, there's and then that's the number that they use. And that's the number that that's they funny. use to show people on when they go to the clubs because people are always chasing for the highest, the strongest, and so they're assuming right. that that is that all the time. Now that more than likely, if you're getting one that's 29, it's the highest in the entire club. It's probably one of the highest too, but mm. it's turned into this game where it's you know whatever one's reading higher, we post that up there. When in reality, most of your your top cannabis plants are probably somewhere between 20 and 23. Interesting. I just looked up THCV. It's a uh, tetrahydrocannabin varian or varian. That's a long ass word. He cleared that up. Yeah, man. there you go. Yeah. It's an appetite suppressant. Very interesting. Mm. Which is the opposite of what THC actually does. Yeah, I noticed with uh, with with cannabis certain. I don't get the munchies from it. I know a lot of people say they get the munchies. Yeah, it depends. Smoking it for sure, but like, yeah, edibles don't give me the munchies at all. Really, I'd yeah. be more likely to get the the, the munchies from from really? edibles. Yeah, if I was to get any uh, anything like that. But again, the you know more studies come out where they do these population studies of people who use cannabis on a regular basis consistently show uh, lower body fat percentage, lower weight, better fasting glucose. They think it has to do with the way the liver. And now we go back on to selling it, right? Uh, they go, <laughs> <laughs> after what you just said. Well, that's yeah. that's why I did one, Mike, because there yeah. is there is a lot of cool stuff about it. I know you and I are extremely fascinated and have been yeah. for a long time in it. And so we we talk about all the positive things. You know, the, the negative things that I see is we we say stuff like that, and you know, there's a 20 year old. Dude, it's got a, it's got a, it's it can be abused. Yeah. You know, it's so I'm gonna fast from cannabis. And it is a lot. It's what I and what I'm seeing a lot of is is the kids that are that are smoking it now because. A, shows like ours or people that are putting out information about all the positive things yeah. like that's their excuse i talked to a lady who's a, a old client of mine and she was she's been she's challenged right now with her daughter that smokes weed she's mm. she's home from college so she's staying with them all like you know all all summer long and you know they she's 18 now so she can do what she wants but she's coming home still between you know summer times and she's like, you know, my daughter vapes on the on the weed all all day long, and she never did that before. And mm. and she goes, I have a really hard time. Like, and she when she always explains it to me, she explains, Mom, it's it's healthy, it's this. And then she shows me all these different reports and studies that say that it's not sure. bad for her, right. and she's vaping. She's it, using so it for some uh, that much for some reason. Yeah, you know what I mean? There might be some underlying to escape some things. So yeah, that's my point. This is, a, this is a challenge that I know a lot of parents are having. You know, yeah. uh, and. You know, she was coming to me like, you know, how do I communicate this to her? And that was the first time that somebody had kind of hit me with that. Like, man, what would I say to right. my my 20 year old son or daughter? Since I don't have kids, I don't think like this a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, if they were, I can only think back to the conversation I had with my brother when he was getting to the age where he wanted to try it. And here his older brother had already gone through having cannabis clubs and stuff like, OK, like that's a real tough conversation to have. Do yeah. you think if your brother didn't have, let's say cannabis didn't exist, do you think he would replace it with something else? God, that is a hard. That's a hard question. I feel because I, I feel like with substances, uh-huh. the, there's a root cause that causes someone to want to use a substance a lot. But then because they use a substance so much, that also becomes right part of the problem. You know what I mean? Yeah, like and, an alcoholic. Like, well, he his claim to why he uses it is he's a he's a serious introvert, and when he smokes, he's he's more oh, extroverted, and oh. so and so that's part of why he excuses himself for smoking all the time. Is because he's always around people and doing. So he's things. got social anxiety. Yes. Mm. So that's what he uses it for. So, you know, it's when you and that's what's tough. What's tough you know, is to tell someone like that that that's not a valid reason. Like, who am I to say like if you real have if you have social anxiety for real? Yeah. And you have to interact with people all the time, and it genuinely makes you a funnier, easier person to be around. Which I see that in my brother. Like he's mm-hmm. yeah. when he's high, he's fucking he's goofy and fun, and he is more outgoing and stuff. So I could I could definitely see that. But it, I mean, I think what happened. But my brother also now has to fucking dab, you know. Saying like, no, his tolerance. I, is yeah, so you got. I'm, I openly admit how much I utilize cannabis. I I, I smoke almost every single night, and a, a dab will fucking comatose me. Mm-hmm. And my brother is on it all day long. Yeah, and so the the level of that he's having to consume because he doesn't ever break from mm-hmm. it is ridiculous. And I think that's where a lot of these kids go wrong or people go wrong. I shouldn't say kids. I think there's adults that do too 
where they they start by justifying yeah. it that it's yeah. healthy or it's not it's good well, for it's me a, it helps it's a me tool. with this yeah it's like it's one of those things it becomes a dependency because yeah you justify it because it's a performance you know enhancement on some level like that like it helps you kind of like deal with you know certain problems and i could see how that could be it's just like coffee or like any of these other substances that like i kind of have a go to for when i want to like perform or do something mm-hmm. or you know retain information like there's there's chemicals right there's studies, like that, to there's studies that show that wine's healthy for us yeah because you know, the yeah. antioxidant properties I, and stuff I, I, you still have I, to like you still you gotta know, step away from it right. too yeah. i think drinking when, a bottle a day wouldn't be a good idea yeah whenever you use a substance to help you with a a, 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 a problem the the best way in my opinion to use that substance is as a bridge. So I'll give you an example. Right. We won't talk about cannabis. Let's talk about something else. Let's say I have um, issues with sleep. Let's say I have lots of trouble with sleep. And now when it's time to go to bed, there's anxiety around it. I know I always have trouble with sleep, which is probably contributing now to my inability to sleep. So I discover uh, a sleep pill. Melatonin. Maybe a natural one. Maybe, maybe it's melatonin. melatonin yeah. Or maybe valerian root or something like that. And I take it and it makes me relax or drowsy enough to where I finally fall asleep and get a good night's sleep. Now, the, the process there would be to get rid of the anxiety around sleep because now I feel like I have that in case I need it, allow myself to sleep, but then slowly learn how to go about sleep without that particular product. Right. Otherwise, then I become dependent on that sleep aid, and now without it, I'm absolutely fucked. And this is true with you know, uh, erectile dysfunction medications. Many times, the way men will use them is they'll use them to build up confidence, feel good, like, okay, I'm not anxious now about performance, and I have it just in case... Um, and then they find that they don't need it. Same thing with anxiety medications. When you look at people who use like benzos, like Xanax, yeah. is that just having it in their purse or in their wallet and knowing that, oh shit, if I get lots of anxiety, I have this pill that can help me. Many times that alone can yeah. help people out. But you can definitely go the route of, I need this. Th- otherwise, without this, I'm useless. And what happens is you're taking a tool that could potentially improve upon your making you feel empowered and instead does the opposite and disempowers you and empowers the actual substance itself. And, the, and what you don't want to do is you don't want to empower anything above yourself because then you, you're you putting, I mean, give the power to anybody or anything, and now you're at the whims of whatever, right. and that's not a good situation. Yeah, to be you in. always want to bring it back to you having, maintaining control over the process of it. So if maybe it's you need a substance to kind of get you in that state of mind or that that place, but figure out how to recreate that on your own and, and scale mm-hmm. it out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do... Coming up here at some point, I think Adam said he was going to do this with me. I'm going to do a 30 day fast from uh, with you. I thought it was my idea originally. I heard you say I was talking about doing Fucking it as well. Copy yeah. told you guys have been fasting always for taking, years. Always and I'm, taking the credit. I'm just getting I, into it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> all the cool shit, dude. Yeah, you guys come you, up with cool shit all the time. This dude, this you guys can have it. Doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. But I want to do a fast from from cannabis. I've been thinking about it for a while. I know you talked about doing it. Yeah. And the reason why I want to do the fast from cannabis. Because the thought of doing a fast from cannabis makes me anxious. <laughs> yeah. Just the thought yeah. of not going 30 days yeah. makes me like, oh shit, I don't yeah, want to do that. You know what and I'm like, wait a minute, that means I need to. So you know what sucks? Check this out. So from literally from Thursday night all the way till yesterday. Yeah. So it was all the way till Monday. I had been throwing up, couldn't hold anything down. Did, and even smoking did not sound good. So I hadn't smoked, had caffeine, hadn't had Nothing. anything. And so I was like, oh, you know what? Like... I don't think I want. I don't think I want to smoke. I, I've already not already for some. This would be a perfect time to start my thirty day fast. But then I was about to eat my first like real like solid meal, and my stomach was like a little light and easy. And I'm like, oh, this would be so perfect for me just to have like two little hits and then go eat. And I noticed it, and I did, and I was like, and I did have a great meal, and I did feel really good. <laughs> and so it was like, like oh, this man. But you know, again, the whole that's the whole purpose is to teach yourself that like there's. The, I think there's ways to use it, utilize it as a tool like that. Dude, versus, when I feel like I'm scared of not using something, yeah. that's when it, if I'm being honest with myself, that's right. when I like caffeine. Like that's, I know when I don't want it. That's like, my paranoia. Yeah. Yeah. Where you feel like if I don't well, have just it, I just feel so worthless in the morning, and then you start like associating every morning to be the same like that. Right? Hey, like we- I'm gonna wake up like this every morning, like worthless. Speaking of the caffeine thing, weren't you gonna do the enema? The coffee enema? Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, I need one of you guys to help me though. Uh, Justin, yeah. I'll film it. Yeah. Or d- Justin and, or Doug? Yeah, and look away. Yeah. I feel like Justin. I feel like, I feel like Doug would be the best. I feel, like I feel he most. Be, comfortable. I think Doug would be the most gentle. I think yeah. you're the one. Like, that I think insert I think I think yeah. Justin would be like. Argh. You know what? That's a, that's <laughs> a good point. <laughs> Justin will. Hurt. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Justin will hurt me. Yeah, You'll so probably Adam will probably uh, insta story yeah. it. We don't want that. I trust. I trust Doug. Yeah, I feel like Doug. Adam will use a lot of lube. You know, he'll really consider. Use a lot of lube. Yeah, I'll be like, that doesn't feel like a. 
and like, what, what else is there? going on in there? Yeah, Get yeah. your finger out of there. Like, look, man, I want to yeah. make this relaxing. You know, it'd be like, yeah. then I go, look, no, here's my hands. Did you see everything? Oh, <laughs> candles. <laughs> <laughs> it's a magic trick. <laughs> no hands. Okay, all, my, all my fingers are right here, bro. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Hey, where's your thumb? Oh. <laughs> That's terrible. Where man. is <laughs> Thumpkin? Where is Thumpkin? Dude, speaking you of disgusting, perverted shit, Morgan Freeman. Another one oh, bites the dust. Another one. You came, mentioned, you, you that mentioned before, this before, but oh, what, did, well, uh, is there details now? Like, what's the deal? So there. Okay, and I've I've listened to some of his. Stuff. I always feel like he'd narrow it. He would narrate sex. Yeah. You know, what well, I mean? like why he's having sex. And now, yeah. Yeah. Doug, you can yeah. pull up the res- he, he, he wrote a over. statement, a response to to the claims, and so I don't. I think more is going to come, just like that happened before, right? So. Remember when when the Kevin Spacey thing came out, and when, I mean they first come out with this, they have to come out with a statement right away, right? Yeah. And so he comes out with a statement defending himself, you know, like Just well, you know, I, I, I was being more playful and fun, and I apologize to anyone who felt this way, and you know, I will, I don't. Never- you know what's funny about this whole thing, you, Morgan Freeman? When I hear this, I'm like, no, he can't. I really like him. The truth is, I don't know Morgan Freeman at all. No, he could be the biggest asshole in the world. I like his characters. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It just goes to show you how powerful celebrity is. Oh, 100 percent. Who fucking cares? 100 yeah. percent. You know what I mean? Oh, I think that's. What if he's guilty, take him down. <laughs> I agree. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I don't know why I feel bad about it. Cool, because I, I don't know. fucking know the guy. Because he's 82, dude. Because yeah, they're going after these old guys. Whatever it doesn't but, say. Hey, if you're an asshole, and you know when you're younger, is there like an age limit? You know no. I mean? <laughs> yeah. When you're seven, after about seventy five, you can say whatever you want. When did, yeah. I Cos- thought that was true. Cosby gets sentenced sentenced in what August or September? Wow. Yeah. Does he really? Yeah, he's, he's going he, for a he's long going time. To prison. Long he's time is death, dude. Well, I mean, how you know how much longer you He'll got? He'll go till he dies. Yeah. He's yeah. he's gonna die in prison. Could you imagine living? Wow. Think about this for a second. Trip on this, Kate. Okay. Being Bill Cosby. No, no. If you have the option, right? Of, of you know, you have an option right now to live a life that he's lived, which let's be honest, he probably lived a pretty fucking cool life. Of course. Right? And but knowing that at eighty, yeah. you're gonna spend the rest that of your was life. his deal with the devil. Dude, right? Yeah. Think about that for you a second. You think that was his deal? That was his deal, man. When he was a young man, the devil came up and he's like, All right, here's yeah, the deal. Yeah, here's the thing. You're, you're gonna, gonna judge- be the best and like you're gonna you know, have T V shows and have adoring fans, everybody, you know, all this sex you want, this and that, but guess what? At, at 80, the end of this yeah. At 80, you're going to prison. You're going to die in prison. Yeah. How many people would give that up? I know. That's what I'm wondering. Uh, 80's would a long, you make that 80's trade? 80 a long time, dude. I feel like- a lot of people feel... I mean, I got my uncle's like, what, 60, and yeah. he's already like, I'm cool, man. Send me out in 10 years. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> 70? You're just going to cash out, dude? Yeah. So 80's like, I mean, that, that's 10 more years you know than how, he was expecting. You know how many people would make that deal? A lot. Most people. Yeah. Because yeah. they do that one... That's interesting, What was right? that one poll that they did with, with uh, athletes where they said, yeah. if you could win a gold medal... But then die in five years? Would you do it yeah. in five years? Yeah, but this is different. And most of them said yes because this would be you're also a raper. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's totally, <laughs> that's totally that the, different like yeah. scenario. Is that, is that the that, right term? <clears throat> well, because I don't know a raper. Is that because you could you could a argue, rapist? That's a very good point though, <laughs> Justin. Raper. No, that's a good point. What he's saying because you could he yeah. could have went down, that's going terrible. to prison or dying or dying or tomorrow with that for the, yeah. that trade off. Like I would die, but I don't want to go like tarnish my yeah, entire. Yeah, you don't want to like, now. Right anyone part. going forward that hears the name Bill Cosby will always attach it to all negative stuff. Yeah, yeah, man. His you legacy's know? destroyed. Completely destroyed. Completely. Yeah, yeah. Well, fuck him. I don't believe the Huxtables. Yeah, anymore. that's what he gets. You know what I mean? <laughs> Any of them. Die in prison. Yeah, it's hey, mainly him. One more yeah. thing before we switch over to the to the bird. Uh, you guys watching the market today and see what's going on? I did not. Mm. So Italy. Uh, some big financial troubles going on. They're threatening the euro, so there's a little bit of a movement to leave the euro. Europe, the euro will be, I predict the euro will be gone within mm. 10 years, 100%, 10 years. All crypto. There, well, uh, first of all, yeah, if we want to go that route, fiat currencies all always fail at some point. But yeah. uh, the spending policies and shit of some of these countries in Europe is so ridiculous. Countries mm. like Italy... And France, where they they spend so much and tax so much, and you know Italy's got more bureaucracy per capita than I think almost any country that I know of. Like mm. they have so many politicians, it's so wow. ridiculous. Um, and the markets there are so regulated. It's worse than us. Huh? Didn't, didn't Italy like go terrible. bankrupt? Greece did go bankrupt. Yeah. UK left the you left the, the you know the, the the market or whatever with Brexit. And now Italy, everybody's kind of freaking out. It's not going to last. There's no way. They're slowing down the process of this crumble, but good yeah. luck. What they need to do is they need to liquidate their debt, which is going to cause some pain. There's nothing you could do about that. Mm-hmm. And they need to like 
deregulate the shit out of their markets. Italy's markets are, there's some stupid laws in Italy when it comes to, like if you get a job uh, after a, a particular period of time, it's almost impossible for them to fire you. Do you know that? Really? No, yeah, to protect the like worker. More than like the 10 years? Yeah, in rea- it's, it's kind of like that. Yeah. yeah, But in reality, it's like the employee ends up sucking. And, and Wasn't it your, yeah. Europe just passed that, the thing with the uh, protection online stuff? That just went. Have you guys got anything from? Oh, you're talking about the. Oh, yeah. I forgot the name of that. That's coming out. The GDPR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, The GDPR, something like that. That's that. I think like the deadline is like this week coming up or that. So any companies that were that have your information like have to send any. So you should get an email. Like if there's an app that you have or anything that you're using that's that's based out of Europe. Europe is becoming Facebook on on a mad campaign right now. Oh yeah, you put ads out and And Uber commercials. You see Uber and Facebook's yeah, they're trying to like yeah. We (laughs) fucked up. Yeah, Uh, so sorry. I'm here to save the day. Uh, You see that the CEO gave all your information to everybody. The CEO for Uber, the commercials. Did he really? Oh, it's hilarious, dude. You know what I love about this? This is Uber is one of the the best example I've used it many times of like what these deregulating powers of of technology and how Uber's I mean almost entirely market uh, market regulated right there oh, right. it was like, a race to go past all the regulations it's 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 you know the the drivers rate the the the, the passengers and vice versa and that ensures ridiculous quality it's fantastic everybody likes yeah. Ubers over taxis everybody um, but what I like about this commercial. It shows you us we can govern ourselves. This is showing that the consumer demands right. that the fucking companies are are conscious that mm-hmm. they do the right thing, and we want to know the CEO. Yeah, like we want to know who's in charge. That's the thing. I now. fucking love it. Everybody wants to know that. You yeah. know. You know why? What are lo- your intentions? Do you know why I love it? Because in the past they would do these polls, right, where they would go up to people, and they'd say, uh, "Beyonce, I'm going to make up some numbers. Beyonce earned 100 million dollars in 2014." Uh, do you think she deserves uh, that money? And people will be like, oh, yeah, she works so hard. She does good music, blah, 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 blah. Then they go up to some other people and say, okay, the, the CEO of Walmart earned a salary of you know, find $15 this, million. I find dollars. this argument so crazy. Yeah, $15 million. Do you think he deserves that money? No, it's not fair. They need to pay employees more. He's not. He's, he's making way too much money. That's ridiculous. All said by people that have never, ever built anything bigger than probably yeah. themselves. Yeah, they, you know well, what I'm saying? Like, get the fuck well, out the of here. The reason why that. this is is because we feel like we know Beyonce, but we don't know the CEO uh, of Walmart. And so it's this faceless, evil... Right. Empire, even though he makes less than Beyonce, even though he employs way more people and he creates, I mean, they both bring value to the market. That's why they, they're, they're paid so much. But arguably, if Beyonce disappeared, it would probably cause less of a, you know, issue with consumers and the population than it would if, if the Walmart, you know, if Walmart disappeared, believe it or not, that would be devastating to the economy, not just because they're a behemoth, but because of all the innovations they made with shipping and uh, you know, and, and, and how they've been able to bring down prices, all that stuff. And I'm not defending them necessarily with everything they do. Right. I'm just saying, I when I see those polls, it makes me so angry. But now CEOs are coming out because they, I think they see the power of it, and consumers demand it. Yeah. yeah. They want to know yeah. who that person is. I mean, definitely, it's, consumers are driving that. I love know? it, like the transparency behind everything, and I. The, same thing with politics too. You know, it's yep. like we want to know the intention instead of just like. Uh, checking it in is like okay, you guys are just doing business as usual. You know, no, like let's let's look, what, look what's see hap- what's really going on. Look what happened. The, look what we've done in podcasting just in our small little pond ourselves. Look at how much our the our our friends that podcast that are into how much you hear the what their their message is changing. Oh yeah, you know how much how often did you hear authenticity before? You know mm-hmm. or raw truth and shit like that. Like the, I never even with- I never even heard. Uh, no. I mean, I heard it, but it was not a common thing to even refer to the fitness uh, industry. The fitness industry. Yeah. As as an industry, right? You know, You're so it's it's changing. It's part of a grow. It's part of a tide that is not just in fitness. It's in all markets, yeah. and it's consumer driven. People have more access to information and things, and this is a very very good thing. It's yeah, great. I think it's it's honestly. It, it, I attribute it a little bit to our generation. You know, like our generation coming through all of the mm-hmm. the formulas they've been feeding us forever, as far as news, as far as Dude. politics. We're just like, what? Dude. This doesn't fucking work. Millenni- Let's do something else. Millennials don't want to own things like older generations. Yeah. Older generations- they, they just did a study on that. It's crazy. They don't like, want to own things. Yeah. They don't want to own a car. They just want access to a car. They don't want to own, you know, they don't want to, uh, you know, uh, pay for hotels. They want to share spaces. They want to share. It's just the sharing gig economy and it's fucking amazing. You know what the irony of all this is? How long, you know, uh, 
socialists and totalitarians have promised like if you just put us in charge and we force people we can force them to work together yeah. the irony is you leave people alone and eventually we figure so out ways ironic. we figure out ways yeah. to work together and it's all like through going more capitalistic but like everybody's sharing more that's what that's what like again millennials Crazy. millennials they don't want to own things like you don't want to even own your own information you want a cloud to store it for you and you just want to access it every once in a while like Think about how that's going to work for so many different things. I guarantee you, designer expensive designer clothes, you're going to have uh, services that allow you to pay a fee, go pick up a fucking whatever Versace, put it on for a party, and, and bring it back. If it doesn't exist now, I guarantee it. You're going to see that with oh, everything. That's it. That's yeah. it. I like that. I'm sure. I, think, I'm sure I could it see that. Yeah. I mean, the, the companies will have to evolve to these types of models in the future for sure. Dude, yeah. they do with 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 cars. Look at uh, yeah. dude, my, the car industry is going to be crazy. Dude, my brother That's drove a so Tesla nice. down from San Francisco it's from totally a private changing. owner through yeah. an app. It wasn't even a rental car company. It's well, a private who, owner. Who were we just hanging out with the other day? And they said that they just they every time they go anywhere they just rent a badass car. Yeah. Oh, it was your it was your cousin? Yeah, or, it was my cousin. That was yeah, talking yeah. About that. It was like a Beamer. He's yep. driving around or whatever. So what about the people that still want that? To be super exclusive and not do what everybody else is doing. You can try. I mean, you I'm can just do wondering that. what that's going to look like because you know the the car thing, like having a really nice car, it was like it set you apart. But that's all going to change. Nobody, still, nobody they'll, cares. They'll yeah, still nobody be cares they're, they're not caring as they're much. They care about something else. Is what no, I'm saying. Yeah. It'll, the market will still cause like okay, so like let's use Sal's Versace example, right? Where they end up doing that, which I could totally see something like that happening. So what would happen to like it would drive the price down like crazy because everybody could try and use mm -hmm. it, right? It wouldn't be as big of a deal. Right. But then that would also open the market up for this guy in his garage that nobody knows about right who's super artistic it's like we're going back to the garage band yeah it will it'll, it'll, raw, it'll, like, it'll be and, it, and it's, all, it's always shit. been cool to be on something before everybody else's like yeah. that's 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 yeah. part of the definition that's what i'm saying like what's going to be cool i guess i know, think forward. i i so think it'll still it'll I, still i think what we've seen is with markets is you you see this distribution of wealth and i i hate using that term because it insinuates that it's a fixed pie of wealth when in reality, in a market economy, the whole pie grows. So it's not like if I have more, you have less. It doesn't work that way. Right. It only works that way Rising if we're- tied uh, Yeah, floats. it only works if we're if it's like plunder, like we're stealing yeah. gold or whatever. But when it comes to a market, as things become more efficient, the whole pie grows. And what happens with markets is as they become more free and more prosperous, people with more money grow faster than people with less money. Um, so you have this disparity. However, everybody still grows. So- People who are poor today are far better off than poor people were 30, 40 years, years ago. But if you had more money 30, 40 years ago, your growth potential is much higher. An easy example, if I invest 10 grand in the market and you invest a million grand, uh, a thousand dollars in the market. I like a million And they grand. both, yeah, a million grand. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of grand. Give me that. Uh, and, and they both grow at 10%. You've grown a lot more money because 10% of 1 million is far more than 10,000. Yeah, yeah. But we still both grew. So what happens, you get this, this distribution where... The wealthy get wealthier much faster, but everybody also right. grows, which is not a bad thing. But then what happens is, is technology decentralizes and decentralizes and decentralizes. Like what allowed for one thing that allows people to develop, to build tremendous amounts of wealth is our laws that protect your ideas. Like patents. Like if you create a product and it fucking blows up, you have a patent on it Dude, in America, theory, this you make a lot of money. Yeah. Patents going to be gone. I They're going to be obsolete. Dude, that, that is How are they going to stop? Crazy to think about and, that. And when patents are gone, like the distribution, it's going to be so different. It's decentralizing. So I think we're going to have less of the apples of the world where you've, they've got, you know, they'll be the, probably the first trillion dollar company. When, when patents are obsolete because they can't enforce them because everybody can print their own thing or whatever. Good luck. I see how I, this is. I see yeah. how this is even changing the way I'm thinking. Like when I'm shopping for a house right now, right? It's really, it's really tough for me to like. I've ha always had this dream house as a kid growing up. Of oh, I wanted to have this and this and all these things, right? When you look at, and we've talked about this on the show before. You've you've seen where they do the heat sensor on the yeah, rooms, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Like you you literally go in like there's like two rooms or three rooms. Yeah, you use like everybody like humans like eighty something percent use like living room and bedroom. Yeah, like yeah. twenty twenty five percent of their home or whatever like that. Most right? of it's so, wasted. Yeah, most of it's really wasted. And now the way we can access these, so I mean, how many homes? Have, how many gorgeous badass homes have we stayed in in just the last two years traveling? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because of things like VRBO and Airbnb, and it's like, and and it's not us. Trying to, I think it's funny because I think people the first the first time we had guests over at one of our houses they were like oh my god baller status it's like no it's not really baller status it's if are you gonna give it away if right you now? <laughs> yeah you're about to give away yeah. no what? if you give if you give if you give you're like giving all our ideas if you now. get you got six to seven guys that are traveling together because we we rarely ever roll with less than that because of our crew and everything 
and the company's got to pay for it. You figure if you, they stay in an below average hotel, hotel, it's one hundred eighty to two hundred dollars. Yeah, you're a gonna room. spend you're gonna spend twelve hundred minimum right. a night. Right, and if you know what twelve hundred minimum a night gets you in Airbnb and VRBO, fucking mansion. Yeah, dope ass yeah. houses, yeah. dope ass yeah. houses. And you know what? You just give it away. The but infinity pool. No, you know what it is? We're saving money, and you get better houses. What do you yeah, think it's yeah. gonna do to the hotel market? Exactly, yeah. decimate. And that's what. And yeah, so good. I think about this like even shopping for a home right now, like really evaluating. Okay. Katrina, what what part of the house that we use? Because we have like, I don't know, it's 26 or 2,700 square feet around there right now. And of course I want more, you know? But then I think to myself, like, am I going to really use more? Or could I find a way to make my house a little more... You know, useful and and you and p- provide the things that I actually do do all the time. And then if I really want a, night, a, a fucking weekend where I go wow out in exactly, a, I mean, it's I'll be saving so much money and maybe having a small. So exactly. I'm, I'm I'm struggling with this right now. I, I, I've already done yeah. this. I've I've yeah. gone down and made a list. And it, it, let me let me tell you something. When you when you lose, I had a house and I got divorced and I lost the house. Obviously, or at least we we agreed upon who gets it, which is not me. <laughs> You start to reevaluate things, and the thing I looked at, I, I made a list of the things that I know I'd use and I really want in a house. And it doesn't include a big dining room. It doesn't include a massive living room and whatever. It includes nice bedroom, a big kitchen because that's where we spend a lot of our time, a nice area where I can sit down with my kids and watch movies, a fucking sick ass gym, hmm. and a study. I was gonna say the like, study. That's it. Like I don't that's care. I yeah. don't care about anything else. I just want really nice those. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And then some land. Because I love to be able to walk, or you know, go for a walk or on my land. Start your own garden or whatever. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I'll hire my my dad. Will come do it for me. <laughs> we had, we went to my 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 house, my parents' house this weekend for my god my my godson just got baptized, and uh, people you know they come over and they look at my dad's backyard and he doesn't have a lawn. He pulled up the lawn and it's just he's got a farm in the yeah. backyard with a bunch of different plants and green beans and tomatoes and whatever. That's awesome. And my, yeah, my girl's like, you don't, you don't like doing any of that stuff, huh? I'm like, no. <laughs> I actually, I actually <laughs> my want dad to. does it all. I actually want to. Do you really? I, yeah, if we, had, if we had property to do that, I, I totally would do that. Mm, the dogs yeah. would tear it up in the backyard yeah, right yeah. now, though. Yeah, I can't do it. I, I thought about doing it. That's why we got the chickens and everything, because it was like, oh, it's what a novel idea, You're having eggs every morning and, you know, like. And Did then, that play out the way you thought it was going to play out? No, oh, man. It, really? I mean, it. Are you just gonna eat the fuckers? In in yes, I want to, but you fucked him first, and he's gonna eat them. Yeah, I did. <laughs> it's, I teach him lesson. This chicken um, tastes familiar. <laughs> <laughs> this quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. Our first question is from Courtney B126. What is another way to build endurance rather than doing cardio? Good question. She, ooh, sound, she ooh. sounds like an android, doesn't she? Yeah. Hey, let me introduce you to my android. Courtney B126. Courtney B126. <laughs> Dude, I watched, I watched Grandma's Boy for the first time. By yes! The way. You've never seen that? No, you guys told I, me to watch I it. I recommended it. So uh, that, that voice comes from that dude. I'm the, JP. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. So, so annoying. Now do they see me? Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know why I like this question? Because like strength, there's different uh, versions or types of endurance. So like strength, you could say, how do I get stronger? Well, you know, you can, de- you can develop maximal strength. There's uh, strength in different rep ranges. There's stability strength. There's all kinds of different types of strength. And they all contribute to each other. Yeah. Endurance is very similar. And I learned this lesson uh, the hard way a long time ago. So back, uh, God, it's been a long time now, but back when I used to train in jujitsu at my, during my, I wish I knew why this person wants to, I know, right. That I'm would a, help you know, why context. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I would love to know why, why they want to build endurance. Like if they, are yeah. they even presenting the question? So I, uh, so back when I used to train Sorry, in jujitsu and like yeah, no, during, when I used to, at my most, uh, consistent or hardcore, I would do about four days a week of jujitsu training. And these are, you know, jujitsu is pretty, Pretty grueling, two and a half hour classes and and whatever. And I built up a tremendous amount of, for me at least, stamina and endurance. Fucking private account for, for jujitsu. Like I, I could I could roll for I could roll with four or five people in the row in a row, not stop. You know, we would do these open mats where we do uh, you know King of the Hill, where whoever wins, the next guy just jumps on top and you keep going. And I developed great stamina. And then I went. Uh, and then my friend, who was a boxer, who I trained at my wellness studio. 
d- wanted to do a trade with me. And he said, "Look, I'll do boxing training with you, and we'll hit the we'll hit the the mitts and the heavy bag, and in return, you you do personal training for me." He said, "No problem." I expected, fully expected, that to have tremendous endurance because of my jujitsu, and boy, was I wrong. Mm-hmm. I went hitting the uh, hitting his, the pads. And I'm sure my fitness was much better than the average beginner, yeah. but in no way did it match my jujitsu endurance. I gassed out like crazy. Yeah. And I remember people coming from other sports mm-hmm. taking jujitsu, and although they were fit compared to a beginner who didn't do anything, they would also always gas out. And I well, know there's a there's a there, skill. There's in- a lot of that. I mean, like going from football then going to basketball was like a hard transition for me because it's that it's a totally different speed and and um, you know duration and the way that um, you know when I was playing football, obviously you got to go by time lengths of like rigorous activity, you know, and then stop. And then there's a lot more it's walking like five around. Five to ten and, seconds and then yeah, stop. and then and then basketball is just constant explosive movement for like a, the whole hour, you know. So this is why. Con- Context matters for this question. It does. It does. Yeah. And in, in endurance, uh, endurance and strength, there's the skill component, which is very big. I think part of the reason why my endurance for jujitsu was was so much better than than boxing was I knew how to move efficiently with jujitsu. I didn't have any boxing skill, so it wasn't efficient. Although I did feel my lungs a lot more boxing than in jiu-jitsu where I felt more muscle stamina. Yeah. Because with jiu-jitsu, you're keeping constant tension. Mm-hmm. You're holding people lots of uh, lots of stability, also lots isometric of isometric positions. strength. Yeah. Whereas in boxing, you're constantly moving and exploding, moving and exploding. Yeah. And so the reason why I'm saying this is, why do you want to build more endurance? Right. And if if it's general endurance you want to build, well, you can build it a million different ways. You could do HIT training. Look, if you do maps, Dude, hit, I, I'll give you an example where I utilized like a HIT style type of a workout where this paid off. I had my two my two best friends, or excuse me, there's there's two of us, right? So there's Justin and I, and there's Chris and Jared. And we're all going to do this Muddy Buddy event. It's the first time we're going to do one of those events. You know how that works? It's a yeah, yeah, yeah. it's an obstacle course race. You one guy bikes, the other guy runs, and each at each obstacle you flip flop back and forth, and it's 10k Muddy Buddy, right? Yeah, so I'm like a porn, yeah, kind Thanks, of. Thanks, Justin. Right? Yeah. So it's 10k, and I and you guys know you know my stance. I'm, we're all kind of the same with the whole cardio thing. Like at that time, especially this is years back. I'm really into building my physique, and I care more about that. I don't want to waste a bunch of time doing cardio, but mm. I also don't want to lose to my two other best friends because there's a lot of shit talking going back and yeah. forth. Yeah. You got to win. And so the big joke was that I'm this meathead. I never do cardio, and I remember telling my partner, "I'm like, don't even trip, dude. Like, I'll just kick up. I'll just kick up the way I train." And that's all I started doing was I started doing hit style training and a lot of supersets and low rest periods with my weights. And let me tell you, I mean, from that like four weeks out till I had to go run this money buddy, which has nothing to do with weights. You know what I'm saying? There was some serious carryover enough for us to still win. Now, would I have done even better if I would have laid off the weights and then really started training, more tra- specific. training riding a bike every other day and then running on the other days and doing off. So, Oh man, I brought, we brought a skunk to shed them. So there is right. enough carryover that if you're just looking for general endurance, yeah. like you want to make sure you have that in there, you can absolutely mm-hmm. do that. Well, through the a skill a- end of it, right? Like you mentioned, and I know Ben Greenfield built an actual course around his house because He's a maniac. It, it helps well too, but it's, it's specific to that sport, like of, of, you know, uh, Spartan races, mm-hmm. so that way he can train and have that same endurance with climbing and yeah, and nothing's going to get you. Nothing's going to be the same. Yeah, nothing's going to get you better at climbing over an eight foot wall when you're fatigued than running two miles and, and then climbing over a wall when you're fatigued. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like nothing's going to train you, get you better at that. I can't think of that. a better example of this than swimming. I can't think of anything that exemplifies what we're talking about. Like if you see someone who's good at swimming and you watch them swim across the pool, it's so much, so effortless compared to somebody who doesn't know how to swim very well who tries to do the same thing. You will exhaust the shit out of yourself. Right. So part of endurance, part of building endurance is your body's ability to become efficient with movement. It's because you're expending less energy and you're, the energy that you do expend is very effective for whatever goal that you have. And that's, that's really the, the crux of endurance. So if you have excellent running technique you're going to expend less energy than someone has terrible running technique. And that may be what tips the endurance factor in your favor, even though you may have less, I don't know, lung capacity, lower VO2 max, yeah. and maybe even lower fitness. So that's an important thing to keep in mind when it comes to endurance. Now, if you want to build general endurance, if I'm talking to the average person, I prefer people focus on, if they want to do hiking, that's great. But I like resistance training 
to build endurance. And I don't mean strength training. I mean using weights to build endurance. And the reason why I like it, although you know, it's a very general way to build endurance and it's not going to help as much if you want to run more farther. carryover, man. Yeah. Well, not way just more- the carryover, way less chance of building an, uh, an imbalance. Because the problem with endurance training, uh, it's repet- traditionally, it's repetitive. It's repetitive and yeah. it's perfect for setting up imbalances. Like if you ride a bike and that's your primary way of building endurance, you will develop patterns that make you efficient at bike riding, which also make you potentially create imbalances in other areas of life. Yeah. Same thing with running, same thing with swimming, thing, same and thing. And the with reason anything. why that is cuz you're just to be clear, that's cuz you're going into the biking with the imbalances already and you're just solidifying them even more well, because you're in this poor posture and you're driving yeah. that recruitment or, pattern. Or or you can have no imbalances and just cycle. Just do biking all the time and your body will form into the shape of Yeah, that's true. something too. that works well with with cycling. So and now the irony of all this is, by the way, is we talk a lot about strength training and building up your metabolism and all that stuff. And and the reason why we talk about it so much, I actually got this question asked uh, the other day on a, I got interviewed for a podcast. I'm like, well, why do you hate cardio so much? I'm like, well, I don't hate cardio. I think uh, to be quite honest, the we human, hate the message around well, cardio. The, in that, that and to be quite honest, the uh, humans evolved to actually be better at endurance than strength. We're we perform with if we train ourselves to because the average person's got terrible endurance and strength but if you train to to maximize your physical abilities compared to other animals humans kick ass at endurance we don't kick ass at strength you get the strongest human in the world and the average you know 90 pound you know pit bull will fuck you up or whatever and strength wise right uh, or uh, you know other animals of equal size a chimpanzee that weighs half as much as you is far stronger but when it comes to like outlasting animals humans are actually near the top. We do very well with endurance. But the reason why we talk so much about strength training is in the context of modern life, you want a faster metabolism and strength training does that. Endurance training does it. Endurance training is the opposite. So in the context of probably not being active and having food available all the time, a fast metabolism is going to keep you healthier than a slow one will. Well, I also like, uh, I like focusing on work capacity as opposed to just like mindless cardio. And like, I'm trying to like, up my running or my walking abilities, I want to actually have tangible like endurance. So if I'm carrying something super heavy, you know, I don't have to set it down right away. Like I can keep going and keep, you know, moving forward because I've built up this gas tank, this motor that mm-hmm. I could, I could just keep going for, for real world stuff. Like if I want to build shit outside or, or, you know, be more active and more energetic throughout my day. I think that's, that's another point too. It's like, I want to build up that energy that to pull off of all day. So I'm not like super tired. Dude, I did training r- r- kind of revolving around that just recently where I was doing all these farmer carries and yes. high rep snatch carries. grips, you know, uh, high pulls and, I did a couple complexes, and um, I sucked at first. I hadn't done them for a while, but wow, did my work capacity build up relatively rapidly. Within a three-week period, it was like night and day. I was able to handle a lot more weight and produce more you know, more work. Um, and so I think that's excellent. I think weights are great in the sense that you do if you do like hit like hit is a great way to build mm-hmm. like functional Explosive, endurance yeah like movement yeah so like maps hit how long is maps hit it's a very short program i think we, we designed it only to be like six weeks long right yeah. and we did that for a reason because if you stay in that too long it might not be a good thing but if you want to build endurance in a short period of time try that and the funny thing is when we released that program you know i think 90 percent of the forum enrolled in it right yeah and then people were like oh i'm gonna start in, in level scratches th- a little bit of an itch yeah i'm gonna start in level three because i've been <laughs> yeah. working out for a long time and we're I like know what i'm doing start in level one like uh, give yeah. that a shot nobody try this out nobody could handle level three everybody right. was like level one kicks your ass i mean it's it's definitely hard. It's short. I think they're fifteen minute workouts. Yeah. And I like I like building it's a good endurance. interrupter. Yeah, know? I like have you guys ever done like long distance, you know, steady state type of endurance training ever? No. Where you went on runs or I no. mean it was always sports. Yeah. yeah the always. closest is soccer or like rugby. Like I I've done sports like that where like endurance was basically everything. Mm. But it's it was still very explosive. At one point I was running because I thought it would improve my stamina for it, it conflicts jiu-jitsu. with everything that i've ever wanted to do you yeah. know what i'm saying that's why uh, like it yeah. does it like you being, just want to waste away i don't want to be heavy yeah and, <laughs> you know? and that didn't contribute to anything else that i was trying to do yeah. uh, snowboarding wakeboarding playing basketball these are all the things that i care about so every way that i've always trained my body was to perform better there or if i was doing something that obviously because obviously being a big bodybuilder isn't ideal for wakeboarding i was always mindful of that you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so i think 
endurance running was just there. There's nothing that I would be like, okay, where is this going to help me anywhere else? And it's just, so it's I, not. Di- I did it for, I want to say six months, relatively consistently, like two to three days a week. And I did it to improve my endurance for jujitsu. I thought it would, it would, it was, and then, to be honest with you, it did a little bit, but it wasn't a ton of carryover. I got really good at running in comparison to how I was before. Should we do long winded running? Because I used to do sprints quite a bit. No, I actually, like I would actually, distance. I would actually go for a, 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 a five to ten mile run. Okay. And uh, usually around six or seven miles, but every once in a while I throw in a ten miler, and I got compared to how I was before. So not compared to other runners, I got decent at it in the sense that I could run the whole time and. I started getting to the place where I, where you know, when people talk about running, how it's such a release and yeah, it feels so good. So euphoric. It took like four months for me to even understand that because for the first four months, I'm like, yeah, this sucks the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I hate this. But the carryover wasn't that much for jujitsu. I remember I was like, well, I, I can run ten miles now, and I'm not really seeing that much of a carryover. The thing that gave me the most carryover for jiu- for jujitsu was more jujitsu. Yeah. Like the more I grappled, the more yeah. stamina I could of, get of for course. grappling. You yeah. know, it's specific. But towards the end of that, I actually ran a half marathon. I don't know if you guys knew that. I did I, the I did the rock and roll half marathon. Oh, with, did you really at the time with my wife? Mm-hmm. Wow, yeah. Yeah, I've never done. A marathon. It was very slow. You have any pictures of that? Yeah, of me running. Yeah, uh, maybe. I want to see that. I, I might to do it just because they put you in the Clydesdale class, bro. You yeah. know what's funny? I wasn't even that big because I was doing a lot of jujitsu, but <clears throat> compared to all the runners, I was massive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah, 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 yeah. like maybe it's a good place for our egos, huh? Yeah, it, that's all right. <laughs> That's, that's, that's why I did it. <laughs> Bouncy, you yeah. know. Next question is from Mike Adams Seven. What would you recommend for helping with tennis elbow? Oh, it's we did videos on this. We did do one. Did we do a tennis? We call it a oh. rifle flip. Uh, this one stretch that I it's, oh, a, it's yeah. a tension yeah. move too. So it's like it's a really really good exercise. Um, to we got to make sure we put that in the show. I, bl- I believe we also did the. So this was a big deal for me. La- was it last year when I was going through all this? It was right or yes. right, right around when I was when I was bodybuilding. It oh, was, it's when you were doing all the heavy pulling. Yes, dude. Oh man, it was it was like crippling. It hurt so bad, you know, mm. and so. We were, I remember, and I remember troubleshooting it with the boys, and we were doing all these things. Nothing made it feel better than when Brink got a hold of me, and Uh, that floss. That's well, no, Uh, well, he did floss me, and that does that did feel amazing to release that. But what when he when we did the wrist stuff, and the wrist control from man from Prime Pro, right? Which I mean, this was before Prime Pro, so Mm -hmm. this is him. This is a a lot. This is kind of cool for those that like care about how like how things kind of come about. But I remember that. Brink was doing that to me uh, before I'd ever even seen it. That was the first time is he actually applied it to me, and I was like, oh, my God, this is yeah, crazy. this is working. Yeah, and it made a big difference. As long as I did that, as long as I did the work and I put that in before I went into my lifts, it like – and it took a little bit of time. It, mine was so bad that it didn't go from him doing that to – Oh my! I don't have it yeah. anymore. It was like it made it better and better and better. As I got some of better, the strangest moves you've ever done in your life in Prime Pro, like well, it, it's just like it. It's just so interesting though the way that you can feel your way through. Um, you know your fingers spreading apart yeah. and, and like, what, you, what it is is we lose. What it is is we, we lose, lose connection. To we that. lose yeah. connection to that that internal rotation. It's just how often do you do anything through your day where you rotate that it's like alien? Yeah, and so we you're doing everything. And you start to lose that that connection, and then you go and you lift a bunch of heavy weight, deadlifting and shit that I was doing, and overwork it. Yeah, yeah. And then just yeah. Go- the the um. By the way, this does this is doesn't just happen with tennis. Tennis elbow is the name of the of the problem, but if you have pain, yeah, it, it, at tennis the top elbow, of golfer's it, elbow, they all yeah. Th- yeah if it's at the it's at the top of your um your forearm where your elbow meets, and it's usually it's either on the bottom. Um, where you, you know, like it's at the points of your elbow, basically. If you touch the like both the points of the elbow, that's where you'll feel. And yeah, the exactly. The extensors flexor. and flexors, and that's where you'll feel the pain. And here's what happens with certain parts of the body: there are some muscles that are very difficult to stretch, and in the muscles of the forearm are like that. For example, if I want to stretch out my forearm extensors, or like my brach- brachioradialis, which is the meaty part of the top of the forearm, if I bend my wrist forward in kind of that flexed, what they'll call fin position or whatever, mm-hmm. my wrist locks, and so I'm limited. I can't stretch right. that muscle very well because the joint doesn't allow me to, and the problem with that is I can build up a lot of tension. The CNS can fire that muscle a little bit all the time, and what is it called, like a, a constant state of tonus. This is what happens when a muscle gets tight. It's the CNS is firing it a little bit all the time, and that develops inflammation. We also get this in our upper traps, like try stretching your upper traps. You kind of can't. Yeah. Because your sca- your well, scapula lock you yeah. your scapula lock and it doesn't go any further and so we get tight there and so 
Here's an easy way to alleviate pain immediately. Really deep tissue forearm work, both on the top of the forearm and the bottom of the forearm near the elbow. But that's temporary because it's not going to take care of the root cause of the problem. Then you got to do the tension movements like you're talking about yeah. in Prime Pro. Yeah, the flossing the flossing will give you, I mean, if you don't have someone to do a deep tissue on you, you could floss yourself in that spot. Yep. And that is like feels amazing. And I know that, I don't know if we've done a video on that. That's a good idea, Doug, for a video is to do a floss video. Maybe we'll have Taylor go over to Brink and have Brink do it to one of us so people can watch it. I think but what, what the deep tissue massage does in a case like that is when they're pressing on that muscle and it hurts and they're, they're working through it, what it's doing is that, that pressure is sending a signal to the central nervous system telling it to relax. And that's yeah. why you feel a release or why you right. feel a knot and then the knot dissipates and you think, oh, you worked out that knot. And I think what we am- the signal. Yeah, I think what we imagine is like our muscle fibers are all jumbled up or something, like a, like a bunch of cords, right. and you push on it and it straightens them out. That's not really what's happening. They don't get they don't get all jumbled up like that. But what is happening is your CNS is sending. It's like a muscle cramp, but a much lower one, and a constant. It's like this constant signal that's going there. So imagine if you were flexing your bicep just a little bit, but all day long. You know, you're going to get inflammation, and many times it's at the oh, just insertion feel like, and origin. I mean, just close your fist, close your fist for ten minutes yeah. straight, yeah, flexing yeah, your yep. foot, and then trying to open your hand and see how that feels. Exactly. And, and so, what, all day. what the massage does is you press real hard on that muscle. That pressure, if you apply it long enough, will cause the CNS to chill out. Muscle relaxes, and now you get a little bit of reprieve. And if you do that good enough, and you do that long enough. That CNS signal will be dampened for a few hours at least and sometimes a couple days. But if you don't fix what's causing the problem, then what will end up happening is you'll have to massage the muscle every single day to get relief. Just like when people go to massage therapists for the same problem over and over again. Like, oh, she works out my neck, but then by the end of the week, my neck hurts again. You know, it's like, okay, you got to fix why that's happening in the first place. And it's just, or, you know... In short, this is in Prime Pro. So if you're somebody who's dealing with this, that's a worthwhile investment just f- for this alone. And then in addition, if you have any other stuff with but any other joints. But so, it's super common. One of the first yeah. places I'll touch on a client is when I stretch them out, I'll extend their arm and I'll press at the, uh, the, the brachioradialis at the, at the top near the elbow. And inevitably, nine out of ten times, everybody's like, oh, that hurts. And then it's like, cool, let me show you what I can do. And then they buy training. The next question is from Inspired to be Fit. I'm a person who has a hard time with empathy. I feel like many situations where I'm supposed to feel empathy, showing empathy would just feed a person's victim mentality. Am I an ass because I view problems as an opportunity to improve and think other people should too? No, you'd be just like me. Then. <laughs> yeah. Am I a sociopath? I, f- oh, I, no. I feel like people who fall into this category, I'm going to generalize, Okay, tend to be too cases. One is the person who's never been in a situation that's difficult and they've had everything handed to them. And so it's hard for them to see empathy. But there's also on the opposite end of the scale, and I'll put Adam there, is somebody who's been through a tremendous amount of trials and tribulations and difficulties and has overcome them and succeeded and knows that's possible and knows what it takes. And then looks at people and said, look, if I can do it, you can do it. And I feel like people tend to fall is that fair? Is that a fair? Yeah, but I don't thing know. Say? I, I have. It's rare that someone has. If you really feel that deeply about it, like this person is writing, and I can, and I definitely can relate to this. Uh, but I, not empathize. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think. I, I don't really. I don't know anybody that fe- that is like that that hasn't been through something. Right. That yeah. you, you you would be an ass if you if you haven't been through some shit yourself and you have this attitude. Like you are an ass. That's how mm-hmm. I feel because you definitely don't know what it's like to go through some shit. But more than likely, what gives you this feeling is you know you've had a hard life. Now, I I said that I am like this. Much of I think my childhood I was like this. I've kind of grown out of this to where I have I have empathy for everybody because. You, uh, you even something to me that I what I've realized over time is like that was so crazy. And we'll use my, my dad's suicide because that to everybody else is so crazy. But when I think of all the crazy things that I've been through in my life, like that actually doesn't even come up as for sure number one. It comes up as number one for everybody else because that's how everybody viewed it. But I was so young, like there's been other crazy things in my life that mm-hmm. have scarred me more. So then if I if I have that perspective and I know that about myself, well, what about everybody else? Like, you know, I don't know how connected they were to something and, and how devastating that was for them. So I feel like everybody has had their their hard times. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like so it's it's, yeah, it's true because you don't know you don't know a person. You don't. You can look at someone and see what you consider success or what you consider, oh, this person has all the all these opportunities. 
but you don't know that person's life. Look, I, I, I've i trained, I've been a trainer, a top uh, charging trainer or whatever. My, my rates were pretty high towards the end. And so a lot of my clients were wealthy, very successful, wealthy people. And let me tell you, they have their own issues and problems. I had clients who had kids who committed suicide. I had clients who with divorce issues, infidelity issues, drug issues, depression issues. And, you know, on the outside, you look at them and be like, oh, you've got money, you've got success, everything, you know, must be so awesome for you. But you never know. You don't know. And then, you've, and then you see people with difficult circumstances and they seem to fly right through them. So it's a difficult one. The way I look at it is this, like, I feel empathy towards people because I assume most people are good people. And I assume most people want what's mm. best for themselves and their families. I assume that. It doesn't mean it's true for everybody. Guarantee there's some assholes out there and just plain old lazy advantage taking people but I, I, I have empathy for them because uh, I go I look at them and I go like oh man that's too bad that they're they're still stuck there there you go yeah. that's how there I look go. at it so I do that's what I, was say. I don't get like frustrated with it where it's like oh my god they haven't been through half the shit I've been through and I'm, I'm here now like come on fucking grow up or grow through it or whatever or there's opportunity I look at it and go like oh man that sucks they're mm-hmm. still in that place right now where they view everything as a huge problem and so, so devastating in their lives yeah. so a long time ago I, I had a, a client who was very successful um, in in business, very, very successful in business. And we were working out together and I asked her, I said, you know, you're so successful in business and you're self-made. She was self-made uh, female on her own, didn't have a high education, but she went out and started business and, and did really, really well. And just a hard, just a hustler and seemed to just be fearless in that sense. Right. And so I asked her, I said, well, why is it so easy for you and so difficult for other people like why do people so challenged with this kind of stuff and she said sal i think the same thing when i look at you and health and fitness versus me and i was like huh and she's like it's so hard for me to eat right and so hard for me to exercise and consistently take care of myself and it's so easy for you and she said the reality is it's all the same for whatever reason i choose to be a victim and not empowered and when I talk about health and fitness, but when it comes to business, I feel so empowered and I'm starting to realize that I can just apply that to anything. And it blew my mind. It blew my mind because it's so true. Now, one of the things I love about fitness is it's so black and white. I can look at someone and be like, you're 40 pounds overweight, you're unhealthy. You have all the power to change that. And I know this, I know this. I know how difficult your circumstances could be, but I've never met anybody who couldn't dramatically improve their health through their own control. I have never in my life met anybody who couldn't do something right. about it. So I know that's within their control, but then I can reverse that on myself and be like, why am I feeling like I'm a victim with these other things, which I feel I probably have a lot of control in like I do with fitness. Absolutely. It applies across the board. Every, that's what I'm saying. Everybody has that. There's something yeah. else that you've, are that we, and there's stuff right now and probably in my life that I make an excuse for, oh yeah, well I'm not very good at that because I don't care and it's not important and da 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 also with that. But it's like, okay, well, if that was if that was something that I wanted to be or whatever, I could apply myself and be that. Way. So I think I think that to me is the empathy that I have. I think I feel s- sad that the people are still stuck in this place, mm-hmm. yeah. but I I don't necessarily think that. Uh, I think it's a practice. You know, I think empathy for me has come easy at times, and then I don't know. Over the years, you see patterns, and you see you know how people they get stuck in a train of thought, and um, you know the victim mentality, and that like you just know that they can empower themselves and you just want that for them. And so you want, you want to be able to give them the right coaching or the right um, thing to say to, to motivate them or get the, get a spark back, you know, but at the same time you want to kind of make sure that you're leading with empathy. So mm-hmm. like well, the empathy is going to open up the conversation for me. Now. Have you guys ever found a situation where you were able to communicate through someone like that? Cause I feel like I've always had to wait for someone to ask for it. They have to be ready. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, like you any time any time that I've wanted to tell somebody that they're being a victim or do this or do that. It only feeds into the victim mentality. Right. When you tell somebody who feels like they're really at the at the whims of external forces and they have no control, they have no you know, they they've had no role in it or whatever and you and you're on the other end of it and you tell them, "Hey man, look, you can change your choices. You can quit your job, you can leave your spouse, you can start exercising, you can you know, go to school, you can educate yourself, whatever. What it sounds like to them is you're just, you're just judging me. You don't know what it's like. And you know, it only feeds that easy to say, right? easy to say right. it feeds into that, that particular mentality. I mean, here's the way, the way I look at it is everybody's on, on their journey. 
Everybody's on their own journey, learning their own lessons. Definitely treat people well uh, based on their character. If people are nice to you, be nice to them. I think empathy is a wonderful, incredible human trait. I think it's something that we should all practice more of. But there's also a toxic form uh, or a toxic uh, dysfunction that can come from that where you want to control, where you want to just, just like you said, Justin, like I have the answers for you. Just let me help you. That's a, that's like, let me control you. Let me take over. Let me do everything for you, right. which never works. Never works. Never works. And, and historically speaking, when that's applied on a large scale, results in tremendous suffering yeah. and death. So you got to you got to be careful with that. And then there's also this toxic por- part of it. Look, I don't remember what's the term of it. I can't remember the term of it. But this there's 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 this type of parenting where you 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 feel you empathize with your kid, and it's much more common when a child has a perceived disadvantage. So let's say a kid has either a physical uh, disadvantage or a mental disadvantage, ADD or whatever, or food allergy, and the parent wants to do everything for them. Right. I'll do that for you. I'll do that for you. I'll take care of you. I'll do it because they feel- oh, a helicopter parent? Yeah, 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 helicopter parent. And But they go to the extreme. And what they're doing is they're not benefiting- They're not giving their kid any tools. They're not benefiting to their child at all. Of, yeah, They're, they're setting them up for failure. <laughs> yeah, which is tough. It's, it's something that, you know, as a parent, you have to learn how to st- remove yourself from a lot of the processes. So again, it's a practice. This is something that you literally have to like, you've got to work on this constantly because intuitively, you know, it might sound like, oh, well, I could just help you with this, you mm-hmm. know, and like it, you feed into that sort of need that you have to kind of get things moving in mm-hmm. that direction, but you have to really check yourself. I, I really used to love the part about managing uh, people that I used to love the most would be taking in people who were eager to improve upon themselves. And then I just show them or give them the tools and then watch them. And every once in a while, check them a little bit and make sure that they're back on what their original goal was. I used to love watching that. I had no tolerance, or I shouldn't say tolerance. I didn't, if I saw somebody who came in, said that they wanted to grow or, you know, succeed, then they're given the tools and then they themselves failed. I'm empathetic that they're challenged with it, but I'm not going to like sit there and do it for you. I'm not helping any, I'm definitely not helping myself when I do that. And I'm definitely not helping you. I think people need to be held to their own responsibility. I think a mirror needs to be shown into people sometimes. But definitely, I mean, if humans were empathetic towards each other, but also took responsibility, that would be a, that would be a bit of a utopia. But it's, it, is, it is easy to judge others, right? It is easy to look at someone and say, hey, you know, you can just do this. It's so easy. Because I, I, like, uh, I feel like challenging situations are just that. I feel like they're extremely challenging. And it's it's a it's easy to look on the outside and say, this is all you need to do. But being put in that situation, I'm, I've been through, you know, periods of depression and stuff like that. And let me tell you, man, that's a it's a weird world to be in. It's very difficult to come out. And I'm being fully aware that I am in that. State. At some point, too, you have to strongly ask yourself too, like, why does this bother you so much, too? I think that's important. That's an important question to ask this person, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, don't you think so? I I I, I think so. I think I think it. You see, sometimes people getting angry with other people. Right, that's people. what I mean. Like, if you if it if it bothers you that much, or you feel that strongly about it, like there there's a question to be asked right there. Like, what? And that probably comes from because someone who's been through a lot. This was me when I was younger. Had a chip on my shoulder because mm-hmm. look, and that's part of Become me desensitized. That's me wanting to feed my ego because I want to be recognized for what I overcame. Right. Mm-hmm. I want I want to be recognized and told. Man, you fuck! I can't believe you did that. Oh, that's so amazing. I want to be if I'm not getting it, and I got somebody in front of me who's you know, oh, poor me, this and that, like it bothers me, but why it really bothers me has nothing to do with them, has everything to do with me. Mm -hmm. So you got to ask yourself that if you're just asking this question or if it really does bother you every time you hear people in a victim role, well, that may be saying something about you and what you're dealing with with your own ego. Yeah, you know, good good stories to read are uh, how uh, POWs survived, um, you know, being prisoners of war and the mental toughness that they developed and the games that they played with themselves to keep themselves sane and alive. And and one of the big themes that you'll see within that is that they empower themselves with whatever they can empower themselves with. And if that just means I will, uh, you know, think about this differently or perceive it differently and live my life on an hour by hour basis, because that's many, many times what they do is they break up their day or their weeks or whatever into hours. Like if I'm going to make it till, you know, next hour and I'm going to do this thing or I'm, and it 
brings them through some some times that you you, you wouldn't believe how difficult they were. So, you know, I, I can, and it's, again, it's easy for me to say, um, but uh, I think looking at it, empathy is a good thing. Feeling sorry might be a little different than, than empathy. Being angry at people, unless they're affecting you, uh, you yeah. know, I don't, I don't see why you'd feel angry. Next question is from Hooligan. How do you rein in your egos? Oh, on the ego talk. <laughs> yeah, Impossible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you know what, you know what's, uh, I learned uh, about this particular phrase recently, that there's an ego there's a big ego in many times reining in your ego. You know what I'm saying? Like someone who comes up to you and is like, let me tell you something, dude. I dissolve my ego. I'm egoless. I, I, I fucking, you know, I, I drink. Impossible. I, yeah. I drink yeah. ayahuasca every other weekend and I meditate. And <laughs> zero I, ego. And I have us. zero ego. Yeah. Do you know what's talking in that sentence right there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your ego. Yeah. Right. Your ego's talking. <laughs> it's not such a bad thing either. I think a lot of you people. You have to have an ego. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's important. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a bad rap for sure. <laughs> you have to have an ego. I think it's when your ego um, starts to become toxic to you is when you got to kind of rein it in. When you start to think that you're. It's when it starts to develop an unhealthy narcissism, mm-hmm. where you, you know you're the you're you're everything, you're the best, you're always right, you're never going to examine anything you do. Oh, there's a balance there. I mean, you do have to believe in yourself. It's like, how are you going to be successful if you don't believe in in the process and your own skill set? Mm-hmm. It, it seems impossible to me. Yeah. So of you, course, you know, there's going to be some element there, but yeah, it's the it's checking it so it doesn't get out of hand to where. But you, do you think do you do you think any of us need to do that, or that you could see any of us even getting to the point where we would need to do that? I think I think all of us have. We came into this with a very. I think all of us have strong uh, egos, definitely strong egos, but then we also identify with checking it and growing i think and we that's do it to each other really too so big time it's not just like an internal conflict which it is i know for, i could speak for myself you know just like but being around you guys and like knowing um you know how we're all kind of contributing to this it's like mm-hmm. oh i know what's coming you know if i say something they're, <laughs> they're gonna get me you know what tends to rein in this is funny too because this is the opposite of what you would think if if I if I get a compliment from someone else, that actually makes me check my ego. Then if I don't, does that does that make sense? Sounds like the opposite. No, say right? that again. What'd you say? So if somebody says something to me like, "Oh man, you did a really good job over here. You kicked ass," I could see how that would make your ego want to blow up. But it does the opposite to me when they say that. I start to feel humble and like, "Oh, let me think about like." Like, what that person's good? saying, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, I agree. It's kind of the opposite. Do you feel? Do you get oh, that yeah, too? I, agree. I, I agree. get uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I agree. I mean, the whole this. I mean, this whole Viore mirror and you know, very humbling. Yeah, very, very much so. Where I think somebody, but that's because we never were chasing the the fame thing or the that that never. I never cared to feed my ego like that. Like it was never like that. I so, think we actually dislike it a little bit. Not a ton, but I think that's probably the. The fame aspect of it, or getting recognized. No, I, I don't see any of us getting comfortable. What with I, that. What I like about it, and Katrina asked me about this because she she lo- we love she loves to talk about this stuff like this, and she's asked me like, you know, how did that feel? Like, what what are you going through right now? Like, well, how are you processing all this? And I'm like, well, I think I. Th-, and she's like, are you you don't seem like overly excited? I'm like, no, I, this was an incredible time. Like, I, we met some great people, I had great conversations. I said. You know, I I got to be honest. I was a little nervous going into it, but not nervous having to do with the people, having everything to do with. You know, I allowed Taylor a lot of autonomy and like go ahead and I don't I didn't know much about what we were doing. That's the first time that we've really done something that I didn't feel like I was a part of the business and 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 the decisions and how it was going to be done. So there was a lot of pressure on him to deliver on a really good experience, uh, more so for our guests than than us, right? And so I was really concerned about that. And so the fact that it was blown out and it was huge and there was a ton of people and it went amazing, uh, that feels awesome. So I kind of look at it more like that. And it's great feedback that I know we're, we're, we're delivering the right message. I know we're doing the right thing. So I feel really good inside. Like it definitely made me feel mm-hmm. good. And then like the conversations that we had, uh, I was blown away by a lot of the questions not having anything to do really with fitness you know maybe overall health and wellness but more like relationships and communication and things like that i thought that was really cool to get that that oh, okay we're impacting like, that made me feel good inside but none of it drove it uh anywhere near this like it didn't make me feel cocky or aha or nothing like that at all i don't think i feel that, like that i don't com- think we i don't think any of us have that 
You know what no. that comes from? I mean, from? fuck, we had people chanting outside. That was kind of trip because she that asked was me that trippy, too. That was trippy, dude. You know, 100 people outside chanting, mind pump, like with nobody like orchestrating it. That was kind of fucking weird. We don't even really play weird. music. You know? Right? Like, what the hell? Yeah, right. that, was, yeah. that was really weird. <laughs> right, right. You so, know what uh, I think I, I think that the big bloated ego comes from? I, it, it doesn't come from confidence. I think one of the best ways to rein in your ego is to be honestly confident. Yeah, secure. Yeah, that, because that, when you're, you're insecure, exactly, that's when that shit you're comes exactly out. You're exactly right. Yeah. If I was super insecure... And then boom, we had all these people in here. I would feel like, ah, yeah, yep, fuck yep, yeah. Yep, you know, yep. you would you would have that attitude, but I don't think that anybody has that. I don't think anybody felt that way. In fact, I remember the conversation we all had the first time afterwards, and you know, and I believe Sal brought it up right away. It's just like, man, we have a serious responsibility. And that's all. That's what I felt. From yeah, it. it was exact yeah. words that were said, and then everybody was like, yeah, no, fuck, dude. And that's where we all started sharing. Like, did you guys talk to anybody about like macros and like losing no, it was really deep conversations yeah. and, right, right. and just the experience like everybody had a unique experience across the board that I had no idea like like some effect like on some episode that mm-hmm. we had it's just like it's crazy to me it's funny too the more confident you you start to feel and just in comfortable I should say comfortable in your own skin and confident you feel the easier it is to, to when you see it in other people when their their egos come out of their insecurities like the mm-hmm. dude that needs to be loud and yeah. needs to pump up or the whatever. Oh, yeah. You see that more and you're like, oh man, that that's kind of crappy. It's embarrassing. Yeah, that person's yeah, and, not feeling very- And I even feel like in this situation too, like we all have, uh, you know, everyone, and you said this before, Sal, just everybody kind of naturally just allows certain people to lead and not lead in, in all these projects that we have done. Like it's, it's always been that way because nobody has cared about- you know, being the man or no one, no one's searching for that. No. And you, we, you would see the struggle or you probably as an audience that you probably feel the struggle between the three. I mean, I definitely, I felt that within the first 15 episodes when we recorded with Craig, I mean, oh, there, was, right, there right. was no doubt there was an ego struggle battle to the point where I was like having to ask myself, like, can you, is this going to be okay with you, Adam? Like, are you going to be able to bring yeah, somebody I mean, in like this yeah. and just let them run all that. And I was like literally trying to project. Another 20 episodes, you guys would have gotten a fight. Yeah, for sure, yeah, right? Yeah. It would have gone down. 100%. And so, and I don't really think that's because I, I, I'm i struggling to be. be no, it them. just would have been conflict for sure. Right, because I didn't, I didn't think that was a healthy way for it to grow and exist, which is I think what you guys and we all agree upon is that. Well, you can see it's going to crash and burn. So you probably would have tried to stop it from happening before right. it did. Right. And that would have started a, you know, a exactly. little bit of a battle. Yeah, yeah. But Kerfuffle. it all. Kerfuffle. It all worked out uh, serendis- serendipitously. And in fact, I actually think that sometimes we can be timid, and, and I'd like to I like to press all of our egos mm-hmm. a little bit because that's when some of the some of the special of mm-hmm. each of us mm-hmm. I think come out too. So it's mm-hmm. funny too because there's such a like like people talk about the male ego, and it's it is pretty funny. Like if if you see a, a guy who's let's say his girlfriend is stronger than him or you know maybe she earns more money than him and, and she, he gets so challenged by that you know that particular issue because oh, I'm the man I need to be whatever mm. and I've seen the same thing with women where if uh, this this has happened to me like you guys know I love kids I love children love babies and babies like me too for whatever reason and I've been in situations where I've been somewhere with like my sister or something and the baby wants to hang out with me and cries with her blows their ego out like oh they're supposed to like me more because i guess i'm you know i'm a guy and they're not supposed to like and it's funny when you think about it you know it's really funny when you start to see these types of things like you know who cares you know what i mean right who gives a shit i think that's the that's how do you rein in your ego that's what you got to say who gives a fuck right (laughs) check this out we have instagram pages as well with different information than you will hear on the podcast so we're, we're kind of surprised people don't even know that we're on Instagram, but we are. Oh, yeah. My we're page, cool like that. My page is Mind Pump Sal. Justin is Mind Pump Justin. And Adam, if you want to guess, Mind Pump Adam. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. 
If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support. And until next time, this is Mind Pump.